Hello guys, hello folks. I wonder how much the like pre the pre tape or whatever shows up, you know, when I broadcast. I got to check that. Because it doesn't start I know when I hit go live, you know, there's a there's a bit of buffer that has to build up and uh maybe like 30 seconds ahead or something. So I got to check and see so if I'm actually live. Am I actually live, guys? Can you actually see? So let's get some confirmation. In the meantime, I'm going to set up my other device here to look at your comments. And I probably need some sort of uh, like intro video that I need to run. So it makes sense. Hello in Tire Meyer and Finer Etails and I'm in it and James Miller and Fear Lutzi and Iron Fist and... Uh, Elias was the first. So, okay. So, AMG, Jellyfish, Grayson. Hello, Grayson. You're new. <clears throat> okay. So, we got uh, we got a whole bunch of you here now. Uh, one. Uh, Cad, Cad, Cad Noir. Phantom. Phantom. And Brandon. Let me see. Brandon Ains, Brandon Ains, can't see yet, and Meme Connect. Well, welcome, welcome. Let's see uh, how many uh, we actually show here. It says yeah, there's uh, there's a few of you. Okay, in Germany, are you actually in Germany, Fear Lutzi? Because uh, it's it kind of early for you. Are you actually awake? I'm introducing a lot of people to the Pine Phone. Meme Connect is. So, yes. So, we have a... I have a specific goal for this... Uh, for this live stream tonight. Because I don't want to confuse you. You know, I've came up with so many videos. And some of you may get conflicting signals about what I'm trying to do. In one case, I'm talking about Pine Phones. And then in one case, I'm talking about iPhones. How not to have iPhones. And then here we are with the latest video and I'm talking about, you know, some version of Android. And I, I want to make this clear because, you know, it's not clear what you want to use because each person needs a selection based on the threats that they, uh, they think they have. So depending on your threat level, you decide what you're going to use. And it's different for different people. I, I would guess that for many of you, you may be like the most privacy conscious individual. And you probably can't get your wife to use an Ubuntu Touch. <clears throat> or, you know, they want a specific app because they need it for work and they can't do that. And they want an option. And so we're going to discuss all this. Hello, Zuck. We're going to discuss all this. So you kind of get... A big picture of where where I stand here, and and I don't want you to get confused about what I'm trying to say and what I'm trying to focus on, because uh, there's actually a meaning to you know there's a purpose to this madness. It's not I'm not just randomly like you know talking about phones for no reason. It's it's a very specific thing, and I want you to understand that when you watch the video, then you you understand what the choices are. The other thing that I want to say is you know some people are watching my channel and said, oh, this guy's just, you know, here to sell us, whatever. You know what? I don't really care how you get the phone. You, you know, you could build it yourself, do, do whatever you're, if you're very techie and you can do that. And I even made the videos to instruct you on how to install a bunch to touch. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not here to, to, uh, to, uh, you know, try to fleece money out of you. That's not the purpose. No, the purpose is for you to get some privacy. Now, many of you can't do what I'm doing with the phones because it is very, very difficult. So today, one of the things we're going to talk about, and I'm going to make a separate video for that, is what I did to convert this phone. Can't even pick the right phone here. But this phone, which I set up, and uh, it took me a week. And I set up a second one today. It took me, you know, now that I know what to do, it took me three hours. I mean, it's it's not easy to do. And, not, and I know how to do it. 
Okay, can you imagine if you don't know how? I mean, it's very, you're going to be searching the internet for a week and you're not going to find the answer uh, unless you, you have that kind of knowledge to go figure it out. And I actually couldn't figure it out, so I looked at the source code and said, what the fuck is going on here? So that's uh, what I accomplished here, and I'll tell you why, you know, what, what is the difference between this and using this. Okay, and the fact of the matter is, I'm here for all people and not just for techies. And unless you're a techie, there's absolutely no chance you're going to be able to install this yourself. I'm going to tell you right now, unless you're like you're super familiar with this, uh, it, it's a new phone. So there's not even Lineage OS support for this. I did this by research and uh, figured it out and I couldn't even find the instructions uh, online so I just you know through trial and error I figured it out and uh, it works it works and not only works works very well and uh, and I'll you know I'll show you why this is a, a diff completely different choice than this these are two valid choices completely valid choices okay so which one you choose depends on uh, what threat you you feel like you you have and and so each one is valid so i want to make sure that that's clear okay let me read that comment that is a moto that this is this is a uh moto g7 play which is 32 gigabyte of uh flash two gigabytes of memory a nice camera um very nice screen it's a 2019 phone so it's it's f fairly new it's a new phone just a few months old and uh you know it's because it's a new phone it's going to be better than buying a used phone and converting it so it's a few months old so because of that it it's uh it's pretty <clears throat> it's pretty powerful for for a phone you know for a cheap phone so I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest comparing this to an iPhone 10 which is two years old uh, I you know it works works just a life like an iPhone 10 for me I mean it's uh, I notice absolutely no difference so performance wise and everything it's 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 uh, you know it's pretty snappy and and uh, for a fraction of the price I told you in my video how much I paid for my iPhone 10 you know 1400 bucks for 256 gigabytes of of flash so so he said you know he said worth buying a phone for 1400 bucks is it worth for you to get an iphone for that much money uh thinking back i said it's pretty stupid i mean this phone is almost due okay and, and i'm selling this for just a little bit over 250 I mean, I, you know, I, I don't get it. I, I don't get why. And here's a Pine phone for 150 So here's a, uh, a Bunta Touch. Obviously, the Nexus 5 is pretty inexpensive, but I, I have to charge for the time to load a Bunta Touch on it. Because of the VPN vulnerability out there, how is your VPN helping anymore? with privacy against government. I don't know what uh, you're talking about, Elias. I, that's not the kind of vulnerability you'd have to worry about. Uh, is there a YouTube Linux app? Uh, on Ubuntu Touch, you just use a web app. It's in the open store. You just do a web app. And there's a web app creator and some other things that can make a uh, an icon on the screen. Did you flash a GSI on the Moto or compile lineage by source? I used a GSI and then I modified the GSI. Yeah, it's it's a GSI modified, and then but unfortunately it's not that simple. You gotta modify everything else. Okay, I mean you gotta go command line and root and modify some things <clears throat> on the GSI and on the other partitions as well so it's not it's not like slam dunk it's not something that you can just say oh uh, you know it's just, 
All I have to do is put a GSI in. Well, if it were that simple, then we'll, we'll be uh, <clears throat> we'll be all set. But it's not that simple. Why people choose Nexus Phone? Why? Uh, because it's the only option right now that's reliable for Ubuntu Touch. So if you want a Linux phone, which is you know one of the pretty much safest options before the Pine Phone appeared. I would use a Nexus 5. Now, nowadays, I'd probably uh, soon, if you want to use Linux, then you, you'd use a Pine phone, this Pine phone here, and load a bunch of touch on it or something else. And uh, that's what you would use instead of a Nexus 5. At the moment, the Nexus 5 is a lot more stable than the Pine phone. So they're, they're quite different. Uh, can you use can you use live streamer on Linux? I'm using OBS on Linux. I, I don't know uh, what live 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 streamer does. I'm using OBS. I don't know if Streamlabs uh, has a version for Linux, but I'm using OBS. Uh, could you do online banking by having your online bank on your home screen? I even add Twitter's with web app version to my home screen since I don't use a native tw Twitter app. Yes, you should be able to do that. Note, 6P is the most difficult to change a battery on. Six. What is a 6P? Is that a Nexus 6P? Uh, I th think web applications should be the way of the future and not native apps, although native apps does have its uses. I, that's not correct, Grayson. I wish uh, web apps, because, you know, my app is a web app. But the, the expectations of people now is that, you know, it should be running fast even when there's no internet. And you can only fake that with a native app. It's pretty hard to fake it on a, on a web app. So that is the biggest problem with web app. Nexus 6P. That Nexus 6P is not on my list at all. There's no Nexus 6P. It doesn't work on about to touch. And I'm not going to uh, port an old phone to use uh, AOSP. So not going to do that. You could do, let me see. Um, okay. I use an iPhone, but never logged in an Apple ID or any Google Apps. That's good for privacy. Uh, how do you use an iPhone without logging into anything? <clears throat> That's how is that practical? That that means you can't load any apps. So that is, yeah, no apps. That doesn't make any sense. Might as well dump your iPhone. They're spying on you. They don't know who you are. It's impossible to actually use an iPhone without logging in. I could, wouldn't get an iPhone if I was paid to have one. Uh, what am I missing here? Uh, which phone is that? I pressed the like button for thumbs up. Thank you. No adult beverages. I'm not. You know, let me let me side side talk before I we before we get deep into the topic. I'm I'm just gonna say it's a side discussion here that. Uh, I don't know. L.A. feels like I'm in L.A. For those of you who don't know, and YouTube has a YouTube space in L.A. There's a big giant building of YouTube here, and uh, I scheduled to go to YouTube uh, to you know for for a seminar, <clears throat> and YouTube sent me a notice yesterday that they're canceling all public events because of coronavirus. So they don't want any gathering. In fact, if you're applying for a job at YouTube or Google, they're going to do it online. Most travel has been stopped and they're expecting people to work online. So, you know, you're going to have to use Skype or whatever to even do, you know, interviews because they don't want people traveling around. So that's kind of big. Uh, you know, even schools are planning it, you know, what to do, churches. It's a very big deal now in L.A. Uh, uh, they found that, the, you know, two of the medical examiners at the LAX airport got coronavirus. So, so it kind of just changes everything here. So, anyway, uh, it's kind of a scary time. I mean, I'm not really scared in terms of coronavirus, but you know, the shutdown and how people behave and all that is going to be an issue. So 
so anyway what do you think of the tor network i have many uh videos on the tor network and i even sell a tor router when is the moto g7 video coming out moto g7 play video will come out will come out uh, next week i received a settlement due to frequent battery shutdown for my nexus 6p and i will not go through with the experience again well the Nexus 6P is of no interest anymore. No one should be buying a Nexus 6P, you know. Uh, why? So I don't recommend it for any purpose. It's certainly not compatible with uh, anything I'm working on. Just for message and phone calls. Uh, Mick, what phone, iPhone is this? That's, that's not an efficient choice of device. So you're kind of wasting it because you're paying for data for no reason. What do you think of Android on phone using Collirium and Check Check A One N? I don't know what that is. <clears throat> I don't know what Collirium and Check A One N is. Okay, so <clears throat> so anyway, so you know things are kind of changing uh, because of this. Uh, coronavirus thing and changing how we deal with things here in my area so even affecting YouTube now so is there any way to do video chat on amateur radio digital mode no not fast enough uh, amateur radio is too slow uh, no actually no uh, wrong no wrong jellyfish no that is completely wrong if you have your private uh, mesh i am doing video but it's not it's not i don't have the software for uh for uh dual but i am passing video from my boat which is four miles away or so to my house so i can you know turn on the uh the um the connection using rate my uh, my dish network and i have a private internet and it's actually good enough to uh to live stream so i am streaming video so i sorry i i didn't think about that I, i'm thinking about you know normal digital modes but this is not a nor normal digital mode i'm transmitting on uh on one point uh I'm transmitting right above the the Wi-Fi band on the higher range. Two point, let's see, uh, five gigahertz. I'm using five gigahertz. So is the Pine Phone what we are waiting for? Not necessarily. It depends. I heard about Pone Pone Phone. Um, I you know those are gimmicks. Um, you know, kind of like Black Phone. Black phone is another gimmick, okay? <clears throat> Black phone is nothing more than an ordinary Android and they put in a uh, VPN to connect to their server so your voice over IP goes to their server and you say, well, I have a secure phone and you're paying extra for that service. Uh, come on. There are other ways, okay? Other ways. Okay, so let me let me just uh, give you kind of a quick summary of... Uh, of some of the choices and why my videos have been focusing on this. I'm going to tell you flat out, you know, many, many of my friends, especially those on Braxme, are very fond of their iPhones. I myself, you know, have been using iPhones for many, many years. In fact, I was using it to broadcast on Periscope for the last five years. And, uh, you know, I prefer using an iPhone for broadcasting and Periscope then I do Android. It's a much better machine for Periscope. But over the years, I've been trying to, you know, say, is there a way out of the problem of tracking that, you know, Apple and Google do? And and it 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 isn't until you think about it very precisely in terms of threat that you can actually analyze it and say, well, wait a minute. From a threat point of view, what are we actually trying to protect ourselves against? In which case, then you make your choice. 
I mean, it's 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 easy to make absolute choices and say yes, a Linux phone, a Linux phone, and the the true Linux phone is is a Pine phone, not not a Nexus Five. So yes, this this uh, this Pine phone here is the true Linux phone, and if you're gonna you know compare all this, this is obviously the best one, and why? Because this one doesn't have any blobs of any seriousness and you can switch off the activity to that blob if you wanted to so if you're if you need to be like Snowden secure you could use a pine phone and switch off the modem and you'd have an extremely secure device with no modem which you cannot do you cannot do this on a Nexus 5 the reason there's no switch for the modem so the modem can still spy on you okay but you have to start understanding what is a threat to you are we actually worried about the modem for the average person most of us are worried about privacy which means we don't want private parties like Google and Apple and so on to be collecting our data and knowing our knowing our comings and goings and that is the major threat for me rather than the modem with the modem is a threat for people concerned about their government so if you're a uh, um if if you're you know if you're you tend to like to protest you're you're not for the current government uh things like that then you, or you're a journalist that kind of a person will need a more secure phone and for that kind of person i'd rather have an actual Linux phone because this is the safest possible phone now let me tell you the problem with this you know having a safe phone has some some uh, some problems first of all this is a pine phone it's not ready not ready I, I mean how many months before this is ready uh, is this gonna be ready by summer I'm not even sure this will be completely ready it'll be usable by summer it'll be usable but will it be completely ready in the same way that you know you expect phones to be? And I don't think so. I, I think it'll be good for the basics and, and it'll make calls and go visit your websites and do all that kind of stuff. But if you want to do something more sophisticated, it won't be able to do it because there are no apps. So the, the first thing that's going to happen is the stability of the phone and the, uh, the power saving, which is the big issue right now is power saving. Uh, this will last about max seven hours so you'd have to carry like spare batteries to keep this going for the whole day and so it's not there it's not there yet but once they figure it out it will last a whole day okay so they already have testing that shows you can do that but not yet so that'll take months for that to figure out and i'm not even sure they can do it to this version they can do it to the production version so they may not be able to do a full timeout on this version right here. So this is pretty neat. If you look at it in my video, I actually loaded uh, LibreOffice here. Uh, you could probably load GIMP. There's Firefox. You know, you can load desktop apps, but they don't respond to a touch screen because they don't have any touch interface. So, so for that reason, although this is where we have such high expectations for, uh, for most people, you're not going to convince your wife to use a Linux phone. Guaranteed, it's not going to work. Because they don't understand what you believe in. And it could be reversed. The wife, maybe your husband won't do it. Because if you don't, you know, if you both of you don't believe in the same thing, then, uh, you know, it, there'll be difficulty, there'll be resistance to what they're used to. And they're used to having a normal phone. So... <clears throat> Because of that issue of the modem, this is the, the safest device. So there's no argument. A Pine phone is the safest device. Look, even LibreOffice launched there. This is the safest device for sure. Now, the next safest device is this, which is a, a bunt to touch on a Nexus 5. Okay, a bunt to touch is the only linux that you can put on on uh, this phone and then there's 
Sailfish OS, which is not available in the US, but that's also usable on a Sony Xperia X, which is uh, pricier because the phone is expensive and you have to pay uh, Sailfish uh, Jola. And it's going to come out to three, 400 bucks before you're done for a Sailfish OS phone. It's going to be an old Sony Xperia. Okay. So this is going to be the cheapest, the Pine phone. Pine phone is, you know, it's pretty great. So, but, you know, it'll take many months. Towards the end of the year, this Pine phone is going to really start to shine. And uh, a year from now, especially if they have a faster version of this, that will really shine. But what do we do in the meantime? So let's say something very basic. I, I'll give you an issue here. Most people aren't concerned with government tracking for day-to-day -day activity. So you're just... You can say, well, I'm boring. What do I do? I go to work. I, you know, do that and <clears throat> go to the market and pick up my kids and, you know, all that kind of usual stuff. And so I don't need to worry about, you know, government spying on the modem. And the only threat to the modem is really the government because they have the capability to, to spy on the modem. Their number one fully has capability i got an amber alert by the way on a phone that doesn't have a sim card so you can see that uh, you know there's some sort of uh, communications with any phone even without a sim card so <clears throat> given that given that then it's it's uh, it's clear that you have to make your choices based on the threat so if the modem is on your threat then what is your threat then I listed out in that video what the threats are, and the threats are Wi-Fi scanning, and and this is uh, this is a major one because that's how your location is tracked uh, constantly. That's how they have pretty much twenty four seven surveillance of every person in the world with through the Wi-Fi scanning. So if you can if you can turn off the Wi-Fi scanning, then that's a big win. Well, guess what? On this AOSP that I made, AOSP does not have the code for Wi-Fi scanning. And the reason it says proprietary, it was written by Google, and they're probably not going to open source what they wrote on Wi-Fi scanning. So that's not in here. There's no Wi-Fi scanning on AOSP. Clearly, it's not here. Okay, now, uh, is there Wi-Fi scanning on... Uh, Ubuntu Touch or any Linux phone? Obviously not, because Wi-Fi scanning is specific to the way they collect router information, you know, crowdsource router information, and it's only done by Apple, Google. It's also done by Microsoft and a computer. Uh, those three. Maybe Facebook is doing it too, but you know, in general, it's being done on your phone. It requires the OS to participate in this. Okay, so because of this. If you can eliminate Wi-Fi scanning, and obviously Linux phones don't have it, so that's absolutely safe for Wi-Fi scanning, uh, then then you'll be good to go on that front. And the solution is to use uh, Android Open Source Project, or AOSP, which I loaded on here. So if you understand some of my videos, this is what happens. Android, Google makes an Android open source, meaning everyone can see the source code. You can go to the website and see all the source. I looked at it and that's compiled. And then they have a general release called a uh, uh, GSI, generic system image. That's what it's called. So they make the GSI, uh, you compile a GSI from this and that's now sent to the vendor. So let's say the vendor is uh, uh, Motorola or Lenovo, which makes Motorola uh, the Motos. So, so Lenovo gets the GSI, and then they start programming and adding their their own code to it. Then they now add back the Google stuff on top, and that is called Gaps G A P P S. So if you hear that Gaps reference, that's Google Apps. And they put that on top of whatever the OEM model is. That's now what's sold. Okay? That's what's sold to you. So what I did was took AOSP, the generic system image, which is what, what uh, I have loaded on here. And it didn't work completely 
for many reasons, uh, you know, it need, needed to be tweaked. Like, there are no, uh, as an example of a tweak, it didn't have uh, navigation buttons. Because many of the older phones have the navigation button built in to the hardware. The new ones don't have that anymore. They have kind of an overlay image of the navigation buttons. So it needed that. So that's an example. And when you get a Android open source, Google only puts on here what is open source, which is none of their apps. So there's nothing that relates to Google on here. So it's just the basic operating system. So this one then is basically just a basic nothing until you put stuff on it. So, so I put stuff on it and I have a lot of apps on here now. And you'll be surprised at the list of apps I'm able to load in here and, and what, what the risk is. Okay, before I continue, let me, uh, let me read your comments here. Uh, hello, Wayne. Thank you, Wayne. Uh, I think under the smoke screen, uh, it's easy to probably use those things you mentioned and have silenced the Hong Kong protesters. Uh, I, if I'm going to go to a protest, I'm going to worry about the modem because you can get stingrayed and identified and uh, but you can easily do that without getting too hardcore just take off the sim card or turn off your phone taking off the sim card is a quick one because the identification is on the sim card take the sim card off and you have no identification okay let me see uh, last iPhone I had was a 3GS so like so it is likely to be an option hoisting question uh, what is what is the question here? You can get alerts over GPS. One of the GPS signal states is bombing. No, 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 that is not a GPS. Your GPS is not does not transmit data. It's from the satellite. <clears throat> Don't get confused with you know what the data is from your carrier versus a GPS. The GPS does not come from your carrier. Uh, you just tag me. It worked. How do you do you tag heal people here? By the way, flip phones are not Apple or Google. Pure Mind Edu. Hello, Pure Mind Edu. Uh, seven hours on idle or seven hours of straight use. It's a developer version of Pine Phone. That's why. No, it's actually not a developer version of the Pine Phone per se. The, there's no software. It's the same Pine Phone with no software. So the next one will be the one that they're going to do for production. There'll be some slight differences with this because of bugs. It has nothing to do whether it is a development or not. They found a few minor bugs that relate to power saving. So the new one will likely be more power saving because of better power saving modes is what it is. So they're revising the next uh, motherboard to this or the PCB when this, they put this up for sale again uh, shortly. I think it should uh, should be back up for pre-order probably in a week or so. Uh, maybe next week. And then you can pre-order this for delivery in May. So they have to, you know, it, it'll be May before they actually get delivered. Probably, you know, mid-May. Uh, I think you can make emergency calls. To, yes, you can. You can call 911, but that doesn't ident identify you uh, with a SIM card. So it just identifies your location. So when you use 911, it's going to tell them where you are. He asked about if T-Mobile Wi-Fi calling will work on them. Uh, T-Mobile Wi-Fi calling itself is not supported. It's called... Uh, Voice over LTE? No, I don't think that's supported on uh, on a uh, Linux phone. But you can use voice voice over IP, so you don't have to use that. There's other options. Okay, let's see. So, get let me get back to to where I am here. For those of you who know that I'm, you know, I've been an avid user of, of iPhones. Uh, it's it's it. <laughs> My, my frustration has been growing and it, it's, uh, it's been hard to keep quiet and say, you know, I'm going to keep accepting the flaws of iPhones because they say, 
it's a privacy phone, which is, there's nothing private about an iPhone. I, if there's anything private about an iPhone, I don't know what it is, so you tell me. So at the moment, there is nothing, there is no benefit to an iPhone that can beat what I did with AOSP here. This is AOSP compared to the iPhone. No, there's no comparison. Let me just tell you the difference. Oh, I was talking about threats. A second threat on the phone. And the biggest, biggest threat on the phone, it's the biggest one. The biggest threat on the phone is your ID, your Google ID, your Apple ID. So you have an iPhone and the first thing you do is put a Google ID or an Apple ID on it. So the moment you use the phone for the first time, everything that you do on it is now identified to you. So they don't even need an IP address. They know it's you. So, I mean, how do you escape the fact that your your credit card and everything is there and now you're going to use Apple Card because you're a millennial and you think, you know, you're you're going to be up with tech and you want to be have it convenient so you go to uh, the market and pay with your phone. So, you know, I'm not that stupid. I'm not going to go to the market with my phone and say I'm going to pay with a phone. I, I know many of you do. You know, I watch... I watch all these young people pay with, you know, with their credit card on a phone. And it's like, why do I need Apple not only to know my entire identity, but all of my financial purchases and whatever websites I'm, I'm watching, what I'm doing on YouTube, what I'm doing on, on any other platform, uh, who I'm watching on Periscope. Uh, all of that just is existing on uh, iOS phone and there is no way to get rid of it. I don't know of a way. I've thought about, about any way. There's no nothing I can do to an iPhone. Once you you leave the Apple the Apple ecosystem, what can you do? You can't load any alternate software on an iPhone. They they don't let you. So the iPhone is a complete dead end. I'll be frank with you. As fancy as you think it is, it's a waste of money because it's super expensive and it's a dead end. There's no way for me to find an avenue to protect it. None. So as much as you're mad at me, and some of you hit dislike on the video because you're such big Apple fans, well, I can't help it. You may be the biggest Apple fan that there is, but I, you know, I'm going to be frank with you. There is no solution to an iPhone. So I made sure that everyone in my household is leaving the iPhone. Okay, so no one's going to have an iPhone here anymore. And I have a lot of iPhones, so I'm just going to go sell these iPhones and get rid of them because, uh, you know, just it's just too much. Because I, I, why? Why do I need, you know, this is one of the things that, you know, just this, this world that just bugs me. And, and, and if you understand the specifics of what happens in a typical day. So I, you know, I go to this uh, market and they sell sushi, okay? This market sells sushi. It's uh, it's a Japanese market, so I got to go drive to that part of town and go to this Japanese market. And the thing is that this Japanese market is surrounded by zucking cameras. Okay? There's so many street cameras, you know, they're like... Uh, <clears throat> They keep snapping pictures of you and they're tracking your license plates, not counting the freeways here in LA. They're actually snapping pictures of all of your license plates. They have automatic readers of license plates everywhere in Zucking LA. Then I have the phone that's tracking me and, and knowing what I do. So every time I go to this market, uh, not, uh, multiple, multiple entities know that I went to the market to buy some sushi. And I was like saying to myself, I pass the same thing. What's the difference? Why do I need all these parties to get into my life? Why do, why do they need to know this? Why? And some of you say, well, who cares? They, they can know it. Well, don't be stupid. Why do you want to provide information to people that don't have any reason to have that knowledge? Why? They're going to go uh, find a way to hand deliver sushi to me?
Oh, not cal- clear view, clear view. Not only that, I mean, so you get to ring your clear view, your this or that. I'm just like, just too much, guys. So, so I'm, you know, I'm fighting back. I'm fighting back, and you know, I'm trying to find a way to fight back. And yes, you know, having an Ubuntu Touch phone is obviously the best. I mean, you know, if you if you want full protection, yes, get this for me. I I have this on sale. I I have several of these. I have several of these. This is a 16 gigabyte one. If you want to check the condition of this, this is 16 gigabytes. And then I have uh, several 32 gigabytes. So, yeah, this is, you know, absolute safe phone. The problem is, it's, you know, it doesn't have all the fancy apps. So, if I can get a phone where I never used any kind of ID, well, guess what? On this AOSP phone, I have never logged into this in any way. I have never logged into it. There is no login. None. And I have, let me just tell you what apps I have here. Okay, and it's not all the apps, but I'll tell you some of the apps that I have here. I have Kindle, Amazon, Braxme, DuckDuckGo, Netflix, a uh, clone of YouTube. It's not YouTube. It's called New Pipe. I have VPN, OpenVPN, PayPal. I have uh, uh, Signal, Skype, Spotify, Telegram, Viber, Waze, Yelp. Okay, so what's what are missing here? Well, there's no anything from Facebook. There's no WhatsApp, Instagram. Or Facebook, those are no goes. There's no Periscope, no go. Any app that has payments is not allowed. So uh, that's probably why Periscope doesn't work, because it, it takes payment. Anything that takes payment is not going to be anything that you can. Uh, that's a paid app is not going to be here, okay? Or has uh, in 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 app purchase is not going to be allowed here. So the only apps here are the ones that are free, and. Uh, I mean, that's a pretty good list. I mean, it's a pretty good list. You know, Netflix to me, Netflix, uh, not I, I don't do much Netflix, but Kindle is very important to me and because uh, I'm always reading. Oh, Waze. Waze is here. Now, I couldn't believe I could load Waze because, <clears throat> you know, Waze is a Google company. And I said, this is the killer app that most people don't want to let do without, and that's Waze. And I can't get, you know, uh, everyone in my family use it unless they have Waze on it. And this one has Waze. So, yes, this is, I'm using F-Droid. I'm using F-Droid, yes. <clears throat> but you can't load this app from F-Droid. This has no Google Play. So this has no Google Play on this. So, so how do you put apps on a phone without an ID? So that's a question. How do you put apps <clears throat> on a phone without Google ID? So the way it's done, folks, is on on AOSP, you first load the store called F-Droid, and it doesn't come with it, so you have to install it manually by command line. So I installed F-Droid by command line, and uh, that's part of what I do when I customize it. And then from F-Droid, then you get Aurora Store. Aurora Store is a Google Play equivalent. So what happens is if you load Aurora Store, then you have access to the Google Play apps. Now you're saying, well, how do you do that? Since Aurora is downloading Google Play, then Google Play apps, then isn't that dangerous? So this is what it does. This is what it does, guys. Aurora does it by spoofing so it actually creates a fake google id for you when it downloads the app so it's based on a fake google id and you can actually specify how it uh, spoofs or maybe you don't want to spoof you if you want to buy something that you actually want to use your google id on you could but I, that, that would kind of you know make the phone bad so you don't want to do that so so i i uh, selectively tested all these apps on here 
and found out what works. And I found this pretty good set of things that you can download on here with Aurora. And and then, you know, some things work, some things don't. But the good it's a good big list here of apps that do work fine. So because of that, the, the phone is very, very functional. And I'll tell you kind of, you know, what, what the effects of this from a security point of view is. Because the moment you download any app from the Google Play Store, you are adding telemetry from Google. So if you're just running things from the F-Droid, which is the open source store that I initially installed on here, then it doesn't have any telemetry whatsoever since there's no Google Play and no Google ID. The moment you load Aurora, then yes, it's using a fake Google ID, but it downloads it and now it makes a network connection between the phone and the Google Play Store, although it's, uh, although it's fake. But Google Play cannot identify you because they don't know who you are. Okay, so they know you downloaded, but other than that, they, they don't really have any identity to who owns this phone. So, you know, this is like generic phone number. They, they may know this is phone, you know, 11112. Uh, who's 11112? They have nothing because there's nothing to connect it to Google ID. So, and you can reinstall it and suddenly it's no longer 11112. It's now 11115. So... Simply by even reinstalling it, they, they kind of lose track of you. So there's no identity, but there is telemetry. So you make a choice and you say, do I want that telemetry? Well, the telemetry only happens when you're using the app. So if you're, let's say you're using Waze. During the moment you're using Waze, then there's Google telemetry. Uh, when you terminate Waze, then there is not. So by selectively knowing when to use an app, then you uh, fairly have a fairly safe phone. So it, I mean, it's uh, it's it's pretty cool. It's very cool. So that's uh, you know that's why for family members who are complainers about you know they they can't get they don't want to get rid of their they don't want to get rid of their iPhones and their uh, Google Androids because of the apps. Well, this is a in-between solution that it really works for all. So I decided that this is going to be my daily phone because since most things will be on there. Now, I don't use all these apps. I don't use Uber. I don't use Signal. I don't use Skype. I don't use Telegram, Viber. Uh, I don't use any of that. But I just did it for testing to make sure it works. So it does. So... Uh, even WhatsApp works, but I'm not going to put WhatsApp on here. Okay? Can you spoof MAC address on an iPhone? Can you sp Forget about the iPhone, uh, uh, Elon Musk. I just told you there's nothing you can do on an iPhone. There's no solution for the iPhone whatsoever. There's nothing you can do on an iPhone. Nothing. There's no safe... Use an iPhone. They already know who owns the phone. There's nothing I can do for you. Okay, so don't ask me for solutions to an iPhone because there is none. Absolutely none. Is there a solution for Google Android? No. That's why you have to de-Google it. Okay, uh, this one is on my store. It depends on a batch. This one is, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't have any of these because I already sold the few that I have. So this is, uh, I'm selling this for $269. New phone, 2019. That's 269. This uh, is, uh, I think this is 160. I mean, these are inexpensive options if you think about it. Okay, so if you're thinking that you have some way of making, because you're such a big Apple fan, and you love your iPads and your iPhones and even your iPods, there's nothing you can do them. They're all bad, all the way to the iPod. There is nothing. They're all doing the Wi-Fi scanning, Wi-Fi triangulation, plus you have your Apple ID on there that you can't undo. There is no choice. I am so excited. I am so excited. The fact by the fact that I can do most everything I can on this AOSB phone. You know, I watch YouTube, uh, watch Netflix, 
I mean, use Waze. Waze is kind of critical because in emergency you need to. My my car is navigation, but uh, you know I like to know where you know where the traffic conditions are, and sometimes I want to use Waze and to find out where the traffic is because I'm in L.A. So you know this is. Uh, uh, and yes, this is more expensive, obviously, than the Nexus 5, but let me tell you the difference. This is new. New phone. I mean, big speed difference with a Nexus 5 because this obviously is, you know, 2014 phone. This is five years newer. Okay. Uh, jellyfish... Uh, yeah, uh, yes, there, there, yes, there probably is. Uh, certainly on the Android, there is. It's called USB OTG. <clears throat> I I haven't tested it on the Ubuntu Touch. I don't know if they have a driver for Ubuntu Touch. You have to research that. It's possible. We have to support the right people, and for those. And for the and and those are not the apples of the world. If a, your car's navigation and the registration is in your name, they know everything about you and where you are, and what to do. Uh, Elon Musk, uh, no, my navigation is a unit that's in the. Uh, it's not a. Uh, it's not on the internet. I know because I it's a plug-in module. So uh, uh, thinking about going from iPhone, to, Mike Mike uh, Lomberg AOSB. Uh, be just be careful. It's not Google Android. You do not want Google. Nothing Google here. Now the the only thing I couldn't get rid of is the Google search on top. Now I have DuckDuckGo here. I have no ever reason to go to Google on the search there, because it does launch launch DuckDuckGo, but it goes to the Google website. So, yeah, you probably won't, won't want to use that top bar. I I have to find out how to eliminate that, and uh, <clears throat> that I haven't done. So, so basically, to be, to summarize it for you, these are the options now for most people depends on what you perceive as the risk if you're not worried about the modem then uh, yeah maybe uh, maybe you don't need to worry about a google phone i mean a linux phone at the moment until it gets exciting the pine phone is going to make the the linux phone exciting but without the apps it's a bit of an issue and it's going to take a while so for for developers you're going to want an, a linux phone for non-developers uh you can wait you know you can wait. You, you don't need to rush into a Linux phone and then be dissatisfied unless you just want calling and texting. And if that's the only thing you want to do, then actually a Pine phone is going to work really great for that, for just standard stuff. You know, just simple websites and, and simple texting and messaging, especially if you're going to use something as simple as, uh, in this case, I'm running, uh, uh, I'm running Fosh. Which is the uh, one that this is the same interface used on the Librem Five. So, this is the Librem Five interface, which works great on this. So, and they have a new update; it works pretty well. So, if you're if you're if you want to be like tr truly like minimalist, then a Pine Phone. But you can't get this yet. So, if you order one now, you won't get one till May. So, if you want a Ubuntu Touch, which is the only real option at the moment for a production uh phone that's not a sailfish this is the only option and i i have this for sale and at the moment this is the most secure functioning linux phone today so and i have many of these not many but i have this in stock so if you want to buy that and they're obviously the most inexpensive option now if you want to to uh to uh graduate to something you know that's completely functional, perhaps not as secure as those, but pretty close, then this is the Brax ROM. I call it Brax ROM because I customize it, so 
I'll just call it Brax ROM. So this is the Brax customization of AOSP. Okay, so this is uh, this is uh, Android 10. Okay, and I I'm gonna have this on sale on a regular basis. I think I pretty much sold my current batch. So uh, uh, unless you catch, I think there may be one more left, and then uh, midweek I already uh, have a supply coming in, and then I can start shipping one of these midweek. But I think that I've sold what I have now. So, so uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't even, I wasn't even up for sale and people were already buying it. So I wasn't even ready to sell it yet and people were already buying it. So this is like going like crazy. So uh, for 269, this is an incredible phone option that will give you a hell of a lot of privacy with no Google on it. I mean, it's just, Amazing that you can use a phone with no Google on it whatsoever. Okay? None. It's just amazing. You know, no ID. So I can use it all day and, you know, nobody knows who owns the phone. Locations off. 269 for this. Again, this is a 2019 phone. I, I have unlimited supply of this. I can buy as many of this as I want. If, you know, if 100 of you want to buy this, I can get them. They're very easy to get. They're in very common supply, and I can get them in big quantities. So, so this is, to me, this is, uh, you know, if if you're like trying to get phones for your entire family, uh, this will work because then you can all be on the same kind of device and have compatibility. Now, let me tell you what does not work on this because it's not perfect. What doesn't work on here is the fingerprint sensor in the back. They don't have the driver for that yet. So that doesn't work, which I don't care. Okay? That has no effect on me. So no fingerprint sensor. If that's a killer deal for you, then you may want to do the other one option, which is a Moto G7, uh, which uh, I have limited stock of, but if you want that, I, I that's running Lineage OS, and I believe that may have fingerprint. Okay, but this one does not. The other limitation is, in order to get text on here, you have to say you prefer 3G. So there's a selection on here. You have to choose, I prefer 3G network. Okay, and this is a GSM phone, uh, I believe so AT&T T-Mobile so or Ting Mint Net 10 those all work okay well uh, someone can cut the Ethernet cable so what uh, uh, $269 wow that beats Android Samsung $1,000 yes double J this is such reason reasonable price I don't know what to tell you I mean, seriously, reasonable price, and you know, they look pretty much brand new to me. The G7 came out of this brand new box. This one is brand new. I actually, I already sold this, so you can't buy this anymore. But brand new. You can see it even has, you know, all the plastic is still on it. It even came with a case. This is a G7. Yes, brand new box. I had to open it. It's completely sealed. Completely sealed box. So, well, the moment I put in the uh, OS on it, then it's no longer in the warranty. So it doesn't matter. You can't, the, you lose the warranty the moment you modify the OS. Okay? So, so anyway, it's such hard work to figure out a solution for you guys. The problem is this is really hard to make. So, you know, sometimes I feel like a cheap, cheap em employee because of how many hours it takes to make one of these. So it, it is very time consuming. But, uh, you know, maybe I'll have uh, somebody help me make them because they're very, very time consuming to make. But... Uh, 
I mean, it really works. Really works. So, anyway, this is great option for family and for the hardcore. Stay with a bunt to touch. Hardcore, stay with a bunt to touch. And if you want a little bit of flexibility, because you need ways, the Brax version of AOSP. Okay? It's really, really. Uh, can uh, it's really really uh, awesome. Let's see what what did I miss here. Uh, take a look at your smart. Yes. So yeah, this is a G7 Play. In case you missed it, G7 Play, 32 gigabytes of RAM of I mean uh, of flash, and two gigabytes of memory, and it has eight core Snapdragon 632, and ultra fast ultra fancy uh gpu i mean it's very very smooth gpu ultra bright screen i mean it, you know it looks like a modern phone it, 2019 so the reason that i'm able to get these fairly uh, fairly uh, easily is because i think these are from the eu these are like i think this came from the eu So, yeah. So they they're uh, so we 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 have kind of an unlimited supply of this Android uh, AOSP, but you can't do it to every phone. So the the project that I did was how to do it on a new phone. And if it's a new phone, there's no support by Lineage OS. So that's the first problem. If you're using Lineage OS, there's no support for a new phone. They only support older phones. So then I had to take an older, a newer phone and then, you know, spend the time to research it and see if I can make it go. So I took the risk and bought these, not knowing if it actually will work. And, uh, you know, I, I spent money uh, taking that risk and time. And like I said, it took me a week to figure it out. <clears throat> and there's quite a bit of setup to do and command line, this, that. And it's basically a command line installation. That's why it's so tedious, and so it's not something that you you will you'd easily be able to do yourself. So you'd have to be a, a you know fairly good expert on uh, on uh, AOS speed to to figure this out. So so you know if uh, so when I when I make these, then I add on enough for for my time. To go set it up and it still ends up at a reasonable price so i think uh uh i'm i'm hoping that it's a win-win for both of us you know i can pay for my time at the same time have a solution that you can actually uh do can you change a google pixel no besides this is superior to google pixel i have a google pixel i cannot it, it was locked down by by uh google I have a Google Pixel. I can't convert it. Okay. Besides, it's an older phone. This is new. How much for your iPhone? <laughs> I need my iPhone still for for software development, but you can get that iPhone 10 for 500 bucks. Although mine is probably more because it's uh, has 256 gigabytes. So. Yeah, 500 bucks, you can get an iPhone 10. So if you want to get spied on, get a Zucking iPhone 10. If you break the Zucking iPhone, it will cost you 650 bucks to replace the back. A phone that costs you 500 bucks. If you break the screen, it will cost you 500 bucks to replace the screen. It isn't worth it. Zucking phone. No, I. it's not even worth it in the used market. There's really no purpose to an iPhone 10 or 11 or 11 pro i so no no good reason now i have a uh, i have an iphone 6s i believe it's a 6s uh plus i have an iphone 6s plus that has a broken screen i can replace the screen and then sell that probably sell sell that iphone 
So I want to sell all the iPhones. So I have a 6S Plus I will sell. But I, I mean, you know, I don't need to sell to you guys. I mean, you, you don't want an iPhone. Buy prepaid, but no, 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 Elon Musk. That's stupid. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. That's a waste of time. That's why cheap pre. No, watch my video on burner phones. That is completely untrue. Okay, so. What do I miss in the comments here? Apple does not sell your personal data to a third party. They use your data anonymized during usage, but that can be rewatered by them with low effort, so it's a question of trust. You're a big fan of Apple, Zircon? You know, what did I tell you about Wi-Fi scanning? Your phone is telling you, you are five minutes from your destination. Did you hear me say that on the video? I get that all the time. So my phone tells me, you're five minutes from your destination. How does it know that I'm five minutes from my destination? It's because it has a record of the habits, of my traveling habits, and know where I always go on a typical day, like work. And you're telling me, well, it doesn't correct, collect that, and it's not attached to your identity, it's de-anonymized. That is fucking false. That alone is proof. If it can tell you that you're five minutes from your destination, that is completely false. Not counting Siri recording your voice and keeping it. Though they claim that they only keep it for six months, which is at least better than Google, it keeps it forever. What will be the G7 non-play version cost? It's going to be uh, 299 for the G7 River. This. Now this has 64 gigabytes of RAM, four gigabytes, I mean, so 64 gigabytes of flash, four gigabytes of RAM. That's the primary difference. And I believe, yeah, that's a primary difference. Uh, now the G7 power, I cannot convert that. So I only, I'm only willing to do it in these two. Are you upstreaming your changes to Lineage OS? I am not using Lineage OS. I am not using Lineage OS. This is AOSP standard. There's nothing to there is nothing to upstream because the changes are only specific to this. Hey Rob, are you part of the ITL LGBTQ? What is the IT? I am not LBGTQ. There's a bunch of letters after that. Uh, I am not LGBTQ. And is IT a, a tech, tech reference? The font is just so convenient. Yes, Mike. That's why I made this option because it is so fucking convenient. So this is the solution that will at least get us through it. Okay, this will work for families. This will work. You just have to convince them that they should not be using Instagram or any other paid apps. How do you make sure your family does not log into Zuck accounts on the Brax G7? Uh, they can't. There's no Google Play. There's no Google Play. It just doesn't work. So if you try to download, there's no Google Play. So you download an app that is paid. It's not going to work. You download an app that has... Uh, in-app pur purchases, it won't work. So it just doesn't work. So you're, you're pretty much cool here. So they can't really uh, play with it unless unless they go root it without your knowledge, in which case then, then that's a different problem. Okay, if they're that sophisticated, you don't need me. Imagine Rob's, Rob sells someone a phone or something illegal is done on there. Guess who the feds find Rob and who Rob sends the the fence to your doorstep uh you, totally totally you, you have some 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 imagination or elon musk first of all there's no identity to this phone i mean what, what are you talking about who is this phone 
I mean, to be honest with you, I use a phone for a short time and then I sell it. So I, I have myself probably switched to a dozen phones in the last few months. So, you know, whose phone is what? So <clears throat> phones are bought and sold constantly. It doesn't mean anything. So that's kind of like a stupid thing is like, oh, yeah, yeah you know what? There's no identity to this. I sell you this AOSP with no identity. Nothing. There's nothing to, to uh, connect this to you or me. I didn't sign up to any. I never even logged into anything on here. There is absolutely nothing on it. <clears throat> That's why it's amazing. All of my privacy settings unchecked since day one of using Google services. How greatly does this enhance my privacy while using Google services? Uh, moment, it does help a lot. Yes. Uh, I also have it off. And I'm finding that at least they're honoring that, at least for now. So for now, I'm going to say I'm going to be okay with it. Uh, and how do I prove it? Because I watch for traces of that. If I get advertising or any sense that uh, Google knows... Uh, that is, is tracking my activities on the internet uh, like it did before, then I would notice. And at the moment, it's, I'm getting no, no, uh, they're respecting it. And I think because they, they're, because of the, uh, the GDPR law in the EU, they don't want to get sued. So they're very careful to observe, uh, you know, keeping up with what they promise in the, in their, uh, EULA that says, yep, if you check this boxes, we will not spy on you. So they're good with that, okay? I couldn't say the same thing for Facebook. Okay, so, but, but why give them anything? This phone doesn't give them any knowledge. Without their knowledge, I don't have to worry about what they collect. I don't have to have any trust. Does autodial still work on ham radios calling phones via radio? I don't know what you mean by auto dial. There's no auto dial on my on my radio. I mean, uh, I don't have a uh, VHF radio right in my hands here, but I have a I have a uh, HF radio here. There's no there's no auto dial on HF. You have to you know manually manually spin spin it for uh, frequency. There's no zucking auto dial on that. Okay. So no, I, I don't know what you mean. What's the storage size of the phone? Uh, this one is 32 gigabytes. But if you're like me, I don't store anything on the phone. So that's really just space for, for apps. The other one is 64 gigabytes. Because of the fact that you're not loading much on it, there's really no reason to go beyond 32 gigabytes for for normal use on these because of the way you're using them like one of the reasons i was using a lot of space on my phone my iphone was because of uh periscope that's why i bought 256 gigabytes of, of flash because i wanted to store the videos but i there's no reason here this one doesn't matter the whole using a phone triangulation based on cell towers you are connected to. Uh, yes, yes, unbiased. I already said that in my video. That is not a threat that I need to concern myself with That because that is a government threat. If you're worried about a government or because you're a protester or some such person, by all means, use a Pine phone or at the very least use an Ubuntu Touch. Okay. Otherwise, for normal folks doing normal, everyday, boring things, you don't need that. But your privacy still matters. He meant it isn't tied to one in the very least, not the purchaser. Not tied to anything. They don't have any record of anything. Okay. In case you don't know this, the IMEI is not, it's not something that's... Uh, you know, there's no big giant database of IMEI that says these IMEIs have been used by these people. There's no such thing at the moment. What the IMEI is, which is the identifier for the modem, when you uh, put a cell signal on, all they have, because you know why? They make 2 billion phones a year, so they'd have to track 
2 billion IMEI. So, so they didn't do that. What they did is make an exception list. If the phone is stolen, you can record a blacklist on the IMEI blacklist. That's all they have on IMEI. The IMEI is basically just the manufacturer of the phone and what batch it was made and all that. So it just tells them, you know, when it was made. But phones are so bought and sold daily. I can't tell you how many how many times these phones get bought and sold nowadays. Okay? So, you know, if you want anonymity instead of burner phones, just, you know, keep buying and selling phones every so often. You know, you don't need sucking burner phones. It's, it's you know, you don't need to waste money and throw away the phone because you're going to have to use it only once. Uh, forget about sucking airplane mode. Airplane mode doesn't do anything. Wi-Fi scanning will occur with or without airplane mode. So forget that. Uh, sir, what OS is on that phone? This is running a customized version of AOSP that I customized. This is a called a GSI, AOSP GSI Android 10. And I customized it for this phone, which is an Android 10 on a Moto G7 Play. Okay, so with no Google whatsoever on it, and and uh, I already customized it, and all the proper stores are, are, are on this, and there is no Google ID of any sort. And, you know, again, for those of you who missed it, I'll tell you what apps I have on here right now. I have DuckDuckGo, Yelp, Amazon, Netflix, Spotify, Waze, PayPal, a clone of YouTube called New Pipe, a uh, weather forecasting called Forecasty, because I don't want to use, do not use any standard weather channel app, because those are going to spy on you. Uh, Amazon Store, um, Braxme, um, OpenVPN, PayPal, Signal, Skype, Spotify, Telegram, Viber, Waze, and Yelp. So if you want me to test an app to make sure that it works on this, let me know and I can test it for you. Okay? Now I'll tell you what does not work on this, or you should not make it work. WhatsApp, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. No Facebook uh, property should be on here because it'll spy on your MAC address. So you don't want that. Okay? And no TikTok. They'll spy on you too. So uh, other than that, you can test. Any paid app is not going to be available here. So Periscope is not here. Any app that takes payments is not going to be allowed on the store because there's no Google Play. So you don't have an account. Okay? So, so it's not going to show up. So, but it's pretty complete. So, you know, it, it's very, very usable. And it, I told you, I mean, I mean, this is really, it's super fast. I mean, super fast. Clearly super fast. Uh, just because I get one bar and battery drain, so airplane mode works great for about 12 to 24 hours. Is it loose authentication with tower? Maybe. Airplane mode, forget airplane mode because Wi Fi scanning will occur and it caches it anyway. So, yeah. Mike, Mike, Mike Lonberg, Lonborg, there was a study made, and I, I, can, I can find the study for you, but you can just search it for yourself on the internet. And they actually put iPhones and Androids in, in a uh, laboratory. This was several years ago. And with airplane mode on and off, that's part of the test. And they wanted to see what emissions in RF came from it. As it turned out, your phone does the Wi-Fi probe. It's a specific activity. I can tell you the, uh, the uh, you know, the uh, TC, the layer, the, uh, you know, what layer is in the transmission. 
and you can actually capture with Wireshark and you can see that it's actually sending out a probe every second every second and uh, it's saying Where, where's my preferred Wi-Fi where's my uh, uh, where the Wi-Fi routers are on me and then it takes that information and reports it to Apple and Google so if in fact you say airplane mode is supposed to turn that off then why is the device still sending out a probe because the thing is that you know Wi-Fi probing or scanning is actually read only it's receive it doesn't send okay so if it's receiving the signal in the probe is a send but it just sends out a pulse that says I'm here I'm here I'm here that's it just keeps doing that with your MAC address and then the Wi-Fi is respond and say we're here too and this is our AP uh, SSID and connect to us yes yeah, it has Skype it has let me uh, say that again for all the apps it has uh, for communications I was able to load signal Skype Spotify telegram Viber yep all those worked hey mr. H yeah I should have been at 12 now mr. H but it slowed down slow down <clears throat> should have been 12 already I was at uh, you know I, I was uh, adding uh, 1k a week and then it slowed down to 500 a week so we got to get it back up okay so uh, I hate the uh, uh, wickers my competitor yes Wicker is my competitor, so I've no. What if you're if you're gonna use Wicker, then just use Brax me. Why use Wicker when you can use Brax me? Uh, wh why do I get an error twelve hours into selling, uh, telling me I can't make calls? Okay, why do I get an error twelve hours into it, telling me I can't make calls? Why do I get an error twelve hours into it, telling me I can't make calls? Yeah, so yes, yes, Mike. So in, in any case, the study shows that the phone, in fact, I want to use that to my benefit, actually uh, trying to find the time to, to, uh, to get the, the proper receiver because the standard modem doesn't receive it. I want, to send, uh, I want to have a device, maybe a Raspberry Pi, attached to a receiver that will spot everyone's phone that's coming into my area and then record the MAC address so you, I can prove to you it's very easy to do. You can do it in Wireshark, but I want to automate it with my own app. So then I can record if somebody's approaching the house just by their MAC address. And and if you uh, if you do that, then you can see how deadly it is to have these things sent out a probe. Okay. So the what 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 airplane mode does it prevents you from using the internet to do your own stuff. It prevents you from uh, from uh, uh, sending, making a call by software, but it doesn't really touch how the phone works. The phone is still doing what it does. It doesn't shut down the modem and the uh, the Wi-Fi because if it does, it may require a reboot to reset it. So they have to kind of keep it going so that it goes on standby otherwise it's not on standby okay uh isn't that illegal to do to listen into the uh, radio waves why would that be illegal to do what is illegal about listening to radio waves i can do it on uh, an sdr software defined radio i can just listen to the airwaves that there's nothing illegal about listening and besides, I have a ham license, so I can transmit anyway. Uh, well, there's something wrong with your, your phone. Probably run out of battery. I love you, but Braxme is trash compared to Wicker. Elon Musk, go to Wicker. Don't care. <clears throat> if you love Wicker, then stay on Wicker. You're not going to find me on Wicker. 
I mean, it's a wonder Wicker still exists. I mean, who uses Wicker anymore? So, uh, okay. Uh, what am I missing here as far as comments? Boy, I missed a lot of comments here. Okay, let me uh, just uh, remind you again. Oh, my goodness. There's so few of you that hit like. So I've been broadcasting for uh, an hour and a half. And just uh, a few of you decided to hit like, even though there probably been hundreds of you that have been here already at any one moment. So maybe you don't like the video, you can hit dislike. Otherwise, you can hit like if you wish. Uh, any opinion is actually good. Like or dislike, just record an opinion and it helps the channel and I really appreciate it. Let me just say, and I should have said this at the beginning so I'm going to say it now, I really am so thankful about new Patreons on Patreon. I I, uh, I have a Patreon account that's in the description and uh, several people signed up recently and I don't really talk about it and I appreciate so much for those of you who supported me on Patreon and starting to to uh, to move because for a long time I haven't really mentioned it and uh, I, I so if you want to support this channel by by contributing on Patreon that would be uh, so appreciated and you can also buy my products let me tell you about the the other aspect of the video that talked about VPNs and uh, uh, the VPN router and how it relates to the phone. I, I want to make sure you understand this because I hardly ever explain this and it's not its not often very clear to, to the majority how this actually works. Okay, do you need a VPN when you're on your cell data? Now these are two different risks and I never actually spent enough time to to, uh, to delineate the difference between being at home using Wi-Fi and being on cell data. So, so to make it very clear, cell data is a lot safer than DSL, your home DSL with your Wi-Fi on it. So if you signed up for LTE data only and you, that's the only internet you can afford, uh, that is a lot safer. In a lot of ways, you do not need a VPN. You may, you still want a VPN, but in a lot of ways, I'll, a lot of the risks disappear when you're using cell data. And the reason is, the reason is the cell data has a changing IP address, so no one can really track you exactly because you're you're using a shared pool and there are thousands of people using cell data so you're sharing thousands of IP addresses so you can't really be identified to specific location using cell data so and they actually sell LTE modem so you, if you uh, and actually I will sell one I'll, I'm gonna use a uh, pine phone and put Brax routing on this and then you can use this as your your uh, router LTE now it's not as fast, but you know it it's uh, it's doable, especially if you're only one or two people. Then you can make this your router and just have it with you, plugged in wherever wherever you are, and you will get LTE internet wherever with a SIM card. So now what what is the advantage of that? Well, if you're using LTE, you do not have a fixed IP address. So a lot of the advantages of a VPN uh, don't necessarily apply when you're on the road. Okay? Now, I'll tell you why you still might want it, but hold on a second. Let's talk about it if you do not have LTE and you have DSL. If you have DSL, your home system is on a fixed IP address. Uh, my IP address at my house hasn't changed in a decade or more. No, it hasn't changed in... My IP address hasn't changed in 17 years. Okay? My IP address hasn't changed in 17 years. 
So if whatever I do on the internet is attached to what I do on this IP address for the last 17 years. So do you really want that? That somebody has a record of that? And let me tell you, somebody does have a record of it. And the one that has, thank you, C. Bass. Thank you. That is so appreciated. Thank you so much. That is so kind of you. Thank you. So, so by the way, you can only uh, give money on Super Chat if you have a Google Android phone, right? Or a iPhone. <laughs> so, and I'm talking badly about whatever phone you're, you're using. And, the, and then you're using it to, uh, to gift me. I appreciate it so much. So, anyway, if you're at home, your, your static IP address is attached to you. And obviously your cell carrier knows who you are anyway because they send that repair guy to your house and they know your exact address and your your full name and the fact that you, you paid them by check or whatever from your bank account every month and they have your credit rating and the whole nine yards. They know everything about you. So, so obviously that is what you want to cut out. You don't want to have any record of that because that IP address is permanent. And Facebook then, for example, then knows that if they ever encounter that IP address, knows it's you because they have a record of you using that IP address with your real name on Facebook. And so there's an exact match. If you're using one of these phones, this has your Google ID or your, your Apple ID. This is attached also to the IP address permanently. But if you have a VPN, you're using it with a pool of people. So hundreds or thousands of you are using the same IP address. And so they can't really uh, 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 fully understand who it is. And the purpose of a VPN is disinformation. It's not perfection. Somebody was making a comment, you know, saying, I don't believe in your use of a VPN. You don't understand the purpose of a VPN is disinformation. So that's all, disinformation. And you need that, so it's changing IP address, it's disinformation. You're sharing a network of many, many people, and by having it in a group, you create disinformation. Okay, and that's essential because it, it prevents any third party from collecting it with one IP address. Okay, so that's an essential feature. And, and uh, uh, most, uh, most of the normal top VPN companies uh, are not gonna lie to you about logging and all that. Uh, they may have some minor logs, uh, but they're not gonna lie to you about that because uh, that's, gonna, that's gonna bite them in the butt because some of them have some logs. Uh, my VPN has no logs, so right up there bytes VPN no logs whatsoever anyway this is the one detail I want you to talk about think about sorry so most of you say okay I need a VPN so what are you gonna do you're gonna load open VPN or whatever variant of it that the uh, your carry your VPN provider uses they all use open open VPN it's open source so some of them change the screen a little bit but you know, put their own labeling on there and realign it so it makes it look like it's some different app, but it's the same app, OpenVPN. Okay, now, the thing about uh, using OpenVPN on this is that the OS, in this case, let's say this is a Google Android. This is not, but if this were Google Android, uh, Google Android knows that there's a VPN A. It also knows the actual IP address uh, and the uh, and the uh, IP address created by the VPN. It's actually in the logs. It's actually in the it's it's on the phone. It's same Windows knows this too. So the OS knows because you put the software for the VPN on here, and that is why. I'll give you a specific example here of how this is used. If you go to a Microsoft Windows 10 computer and you use the Microsoft Store and you do it with a VPN, the, the Microsoft Store rejects your purchase on the Microsoft Store because they, uh, they'll just say error and they don't tell you why. And the real error is that they detect you're in a VPN. You can't lie because they, they know the tap driver's on. It's the OS. The OS knows. So you can't lie to the OS. The solution is always to put the VPN external to the device. 
and that's why you use a router. The VPN is not on the device, it's on the router. So the, the devices don't know they're on a VPN, they're just connecting to the internet, and this is where the VPN is. <clears throat> so I don't load VPNs on this. So when, when you get a phone from me, uh, I did not pass this to my VPN. It's automatically on my VPN, so it doesn't even have my IP address at home. So if they have a way of looking into the logs of this phone, it won't show my IP address because I never connected it to my own router. It always went my own modem. It always connected to this. This is why this is another thing that you always need. So there's kind of two basic things that you always need, and that's a... Uh, a VPN router like this, which you can use wired or wireless, and uh, a phone that doesn't spy on you. Those are two basic things uh, that you would need. So that gives you only these options. These are, I would say, you know, 75% of your privacy needs are satisfied by these. One of these phones and a router. 75% of your, the rest are habits. You know, fuse Facebook, that kind of thing. Habits, how you log into your websites, OPSEC using your real name versus student anonymity, those things that you, you control. Yes, tap drivers, Mike. Okay, now do you understand now? Do you understand now what I'm talking about? Why, uh, you know, there's a difference. Now, let's say you're in cell data and you say, well, I'm on cell data, so I don't really need to worry about, about, uh, a VPN because you know my IP address is constantly changing that's true you don't have to worry about Facebook tracking you on cell data IP address wise you don't need to worry about Apple and Google tracking you on cell data because IP addresses don't mean anything from cell data okay but your carrier knows everything about you and you're sending your traffic unencrypted to the carrier the carrier does sell your data so the carrier will not sell your data by IP address they'll just say it's Elon Musk you want uh, activity of Elon Musk? We have that. We know every IP address he used and everything he did and all the websites he visited, all these DNS queries and all that. We have that. It's stored. Uh, and we have it even because of Kalia law. So they, they purposely even store it because of Kalia. The uh, Communications uh, Assistance for Law Enforcement Act uh, during the Clinton administration. So if you if you worry about that, then that's the reason why you would put a VPN on the phone when you're on the road. So so maybe you forget to turn on the VPN. It's okay, it, you know. If you're not doing anything important, then probably it's okay. If you're doing something important, then you want to turn your VPN on. So on the road, it's not as as serious. You know, 50% of the threat is eliminated on the road. The only threat when you're on the road on cell data is your carrier. Okay? This account oh, is over VPN router. This account is over VPN router. As, perfect. That's good. <laughs> What's a bra? Kelp, kelp's too old. <clears throat> kelp's too old. Uh, it's too, so stupid to use your real name, says Kelp, and yet you, you want the spying to be done on us by the government. What about authenticity? Even the Tinder people at some point have to meet. Yes, Kelp, go, go, yes, that's what you want. I, I, I misunderstood you. That was so out of character for you. Yeah, so... If, if you want to lose your privacy, always listen to Kelp. He will give you great advice to lose your privacy. So he's the anti-privacy anti guy. Okay, so uh, if only there was a mobile version of the Brax router. There will be, Jellyfish. It will be a Pine phone. But I can't sell this because I can't buy them yet. Okay. When the Pine phone is stable with, with power management, I can put the Brax router on the Pine phone. You don't need this. You can just have this. 
this will just be a hundred bucks more. And then you put SIM card, a SIM card on it. There'll be a hundred bucks more than this. Okay, so the LT equivalent is just a hundred dollars more. And it's so, you know, it's so uh, portable. Put it in your pocket. You have a router in your pocket at all times. <clears throat> okay, so uh, 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 okay, no swearing here, Elon. I can't uh, allow any swearing because then I'll get demonetized. Okay, what, what else did I miss here? Okay, so yes, there there will be a uh, there is a mobile version of a Brax router. Once I can buy this in volume, but I have to buy a lot of Pine phones. So, you know. So sometime in the summer, maybe I can buy this in volume and I can resell you an LTE version of the Brax router. All you do is put a SIM card in here, and it'll be a Brax router. Take that out, put a normal SIM card. It'll be running a to Touch or something else. So I'll just sell you a chip, same price. So be very happy to do that. It's the same code as Linux. I this is already in Linux. So it'll be a simple matter to put it on here. Truly, it's the same thing. Same code. Are you saying I can't trust AT and T? Yes, I'm still upset you forced me over here. Periscope is where my heart is still. I'm not, not forcing you here, Kelp. Pine phones are great. You really think they are invisible? Uh, with No modem is invisible. I already said that. But you can switch it off. When the modem is switched off there, then they are invisible. Can't you... Uh, can't you use a... Use, um, uh, can you whatever mobile use the RPI? Yes, it's expensive though, Jellyfish. You can buy one for. Uh, you can attach an LTE modem to this, and it's big. It's about the same size as this. For two forty nine, then plus this. So now you have a. Uh, so you know, getting expensive. You know what I mean? So it's that's close to four hundred fifty bucks for a uh, for a portable version this is this is 150 plus the software 99 that's it plus tax shipping so it'll be under 200 bucks plus my software for this so it'll be under 300 bucks for a LTE Brax router. So let's wait for this. It's this is I will actually, you know, I will use this. So I, I'm happy to sell you Brax routers on a pine phone. Uh with PGP you are losing more metadata than with OMemo, for example. What I don't know what they we're talking about here. Uh By the way, you know, some of you are talking about XMPP and all this, and, and some of you are are using Matrix. And, you know, if you don't understand the technology of what you're dealing with, it's kind of scary if you don't really understand what you're dealing with. You know, the, the interesting thing about these supposed encrypted technologies is that your data is persistent in fact uh, it has a blockchain like persistence so the metadata will show who you're talking to and the IP address for example when you're using matrix so if you have a uh, XMPP client that goes to let's say a matrix backend then you're actually you know yes your your actual conversation could be encrypted but similar to WhatsApp that actually knows your identities because of your connection to Facebook, then I don't want to use that. I'm going to use BraxMe. BraxMe is pretty cool because when it's gone, it's gone, and 
you know all your talk is just in one platform and when you delete it it's gone it's open source so so no i don't want a persistent discussion if if i want to leave no trace i want pseudo anonymity no ip address tracking no none of that and braxme is that platform so so if you're not on braxme uh, a lot of you are now on braxme and if i have you know 11,500 people in this channel then you know would be great if all 11,500 of you which are all new subscribers here on youtube to flood over to uh to brax me and talk to us there there's so many people there now talking about all this here so just go over and join us and uh, add to the uh you know numbers that we have there before Braxme doesn't have self-destruct messages. Uh, you, uh, correct. I don't. I don't want. I don't want that. Uh, that's a uh, vibe, a uh, wicker feature that I took out. Yeah, that was actually in wicker. I uh, I had it. I took it out. Just didn't didn't feel right for the. This is not a spy app. Okay, I mean, you're already having private conversations. If you delete the, the chat, it gets deleted. So I don't need the timeout issue. It's, you know, it just adds more complexity that doesn't apply here. Okay, I got a PEP link that takes two SIM cards, but the router mount modem was like 700. Pretty tough unit, though. Yeah, so you don't want that kind of expense when you can have one of these for the future. Brax router using a pine phone. Uh, yeah, so I don't really care, Elon Musk. You're putting your phone number on, on Signal. You Signal. I, I'm not going to put my phone number on Telegram or Signal. Why do I need to identify myself with metadata on any of these apps? Braxby doesn't require any of that. If you can't understand the difference, then I don't know what to tell you. If you're talking to somebody you already know that knows your phone number, then it doesn't matter to use Signal and you can be okay using Signal. But if I don't necessarily want my phone number to be on record, why am I going to use Signal? Why am I going to use Telegram? Why would I use WhatsApp? Why would I use some of these nonsense things that track me with metadata? I don't want that. So Braxme doesn't have any identity. It doesn't record your IP address. So if you went to Braxme and said, "I want to go look at the sort, look at the source code," so I mean it's all open for you to see. So you know I can't lie on it because it's open source. Well, go ahead, Elon Musk, do that. I'm going to tell you something, Elon, with your fake name. And tell you something. I put a phone number on on uh, Telegram, and immediately my brother. I, I don't use Telegram. My brother saw that and said, "Oh, nice to see you on Telegram." I said, "Zuck, the phone number." reveals so much metadata and so anyone who ever has that number whatever number is used already knows that you're on telegram zuck that zucked up anyone any app that imports contact lists and they all do will stick to those zucking apps i'm going to stick to brax me it doesn't collect contact lists contact lists are extremely dangerous if you understand privacy you're not going to go to those apps they may be secure in the sense of encryption, but Braxme offers secure and doesn't have that stability. Oh, it, well, I'm going to be, it has auto deleted my messages. What is the point of that? It has all the metadata that you had a conversation. The metadata is what I don't want on there. I don't want it to have a record of who I talk to. And you can be identified even if you use some fake phone number unless you change your phone number every sucking day. Bro, rookie move, setting up signal telegram with a real number. Wrong, Elon Musk. Wrong. Any number will be giving you metadata. Any. There's a pattern of conversations. The same sucking issue with burner phones. Use your sucking head. 
The best thing is do not use a sucking phone number. Don't, that's one of the reasons I made Brax is I don't want to use these kinds of platforms that require phone number. So now you got to go, oh, I'm going to go set it up on this text, this, and, the, and then you reveal your metadata to those as well. Where's the source code for Braxby? Go fucking find it on GitHub, unbiased. Come on. Don't have to do the work for you. You know my name, Rob Braxman. Search for it on GitHub. It has my name on it, Rob Braxman GitHub. I mean, how hard is that? There's even a video of it. For chat set why would you do that, the Zircon? Braxme is even open source. You can set up your own Braxme. Yes, I know Elon Musk. Wicker is like a spy. I'm gonna have to disappear. I'm gonna go hide whatever I type and all that. If you wanna act like a spy, that's fine. You can use Wicker. Braxme is not a spy platform. It's made for normal, everyday social media. Wicker's not the same markets I'm in. If you want Wicker to go use Wicker. Wicker is not open source, clearly, yes. Okay, Wicker is not open source. Braxme is open source. Yeah, between, you know, between this Elon Musk and, uh, and whatever and uh, Kelp, I mean, yeah, I'm being like uh, extra, extra numbers of uh, trolls today. So, anyway, uh, guys, there's hundreds of you that have been here and only 69 of you like this video, this live stream. I hope I'm sending you a lot of information here. Uh, meanwhile, back at the kelp farm, uh, okay, so I got to be careful here. <clears throat> it's filtering out your comments. I got to approve it. Are you getting Brax me into F-Droid? I don't know how to do that yet because, you know, you know, it's uh, it's kind of complex to do. So maybe you can do it since it's open source. Maybe you can find a way to do it because it takes so much research to do it, and it's like it suck. It's like you gotta compile all these libraries and all this like so much work, and it's like can't you just submit you know the uh, thing there and say here it is? No, they want they want you to actually compile it on their server. And it's just too much research to do, and it takes too much time, so I haven't had the time. Thank you, Pent Pentagate. Pentagate seems to understand. I need the best glowy spook messenger. If ciphers are not allowed on ham frequency, why do they use Morse code? Is that not a cipher? No. A cipher that requires a key. It's Ciphers is not a cipher. Ciphers mean that not not anyone can translate it. If you have a uh, cipher that the key is publicly available, it's allowed. Oh, yeah. So you can make your own cipher and publish it on open source, but make it so obscure that nobody knows where to find it. Yeah, that'll be allowed. And then somebody will say, well, you're using encryption. And you say, no, it's on GitHub. Then, yeah, you can get away with that. <laughs> Thank you, Percy and uh, Ad Astra, education works unless the government has a hand in it, when they do. Because Morse code is public knowledge, I guess, like another alphabet. Actually, the rule is, as long as you publish the encryption or the cipher, it's allowed. So, like I said, make an obscure GitHub account, post the encryption there, and use it. And if somebody uh, reports you to the FCC and said, no, it's public knowledge. It's on GitHub. <laughs> there you go. Okay? So, at least for a while, you're covered. Okay, so... Uh, well, Kelp, uh, Kelp, you are sounding a little bit like, you know... Like these other trolls. I mean, the other trolls are sounding like a little bit like Kelp, yes. Kelp is not as trolly today. 
Uh, what do you think about 5G? There's a big video on that. I, you know, for many reasons, I'd rather not use 5G. I don't know what the sucking purpose of 5G is other than to uh, suck out more of our privacy, among other things. We can publish the cipher on a Brax blog. Ah, no, that's not public. Is that public enough, Jellyfish? I don't know. It's got to be public. Yeah, yeah, you're right, Jellyfish. As long as it's an open Brax blog. Yeah. It's got to be open to all. And then no one will find it because you can't search. You can't search for it on Brax. Yeah, that's cool. It's a great idea, Jellyfish. Encrypted with the key published in an obscure uh, Brax blog. Yeah, uh, that that may that may work. That may work. Yeah, it could, no, it can be a very complicated cipher as long as it's published, meaning they have to have the key. Yeah, it can be. Uh, can you, it can use AES-256 as long as you put the key on there. Then, you know, it's open. That works fine. Okay, so uh, forget it, kelp. I know that unbiased is not kelp. That, that's uh, pretty obvious. Are you fulfilling the GPL V3 requirements with the Enterprise Edition? No, uh, G, the Enterprise Edition is not GPL V3. So the answer on bias is no. Because the Enterprise features are not in the GPL V3. However, the rest of it is. So the, just, there's just add-ons. There are very few add-ons. It has to do with mostly the store and the websites. So uh, uh, mostly the store. So the store code is not on the open source. It has nothing to do with privacy. So that has nothing to do with privacy. So I, I don't, you know, you don't, you, I don't, you don't need to care. But the the main bracks is the same. So let's say you do the login, the passwords, the chat, all that is the same as in open source. But as the original maker, I'm entitled to, to serve it into two different licenses. So uh, the original license is uh, is proprietary, and then the uh, uh, one part of it is, uh, without the add-ons, is GPL v3. So don't steal my code without publishing. If you're going to steal my code, you have to publish your work. Okay, you're not allowed to take my Brax me code and say, I'm going to take this and make something else. No, if you're going to take my code, you it's GPL v3. You have to publish your source code also under GPL v3 or I'll zucking sue you. Okay, anyone that uses my code has to be doing it open source completely. If you're going to take my code and it's not open source, then then you can be sued. Double J, thank you. Okay, uh, only uh, okay. Um, I just start watching your channel. Subscribe. I start with your video on comparing tails to Hunix to cubes. Super. Uh, thank you, Archer's World. Uh, as you know, there's a lot of info here. A lot of info on so many different things. Some of my old videos, uh, I I don't redo. Like, there's so much on privacy. The problem is YouTube does not ducking share my videos on privacy so i'm forced to go a little bit more detailed and more techy and that is not that is not necessarily my choice it's it's because that's where youtube is drawing me into or i'm not going to get subscribers so if you notice that i'm you know my 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 content is a little bit more technical than what kelp is used to it's because that's the only way to force YouTube to share my my content. So, uh, but I, I'll do these live streams where I'm I'm more it's it's more, uh, it's less techy. So the live streams are less techy. Okay. So anyway, uh, uh, there have been hundreds of you here, and only seventy of you have hit like or dislike. So you know, have an opinion, guys. It really helps the channel. 
to uh, express an opinion about about what you're hearing or seeing and put uh, a like or dislike on what's happening here and appreciate it so much. Uh, 5G always makes me think of 5 gigahertz channels on my wireless. No, uh, 5G is 20 gigahertz, 20 to 40 gigahertz. Fifth generation, 20 to 40 gigahertz. There's no 5G yet. They, some of them are calling themselves 5G, but they're not in that range. Okay. So, uh, uh, any more questions? What do you think of instruction set should be public? Do you think all instruction sets should be public and reviewed? You mean, what risk instruction sets? What are you talking about? They are public. Uh, you mean Intel instruction sets? Yeah, but they've reverse engineered those. Oh, you're running Hunix now? Yeah, I, I don't use Hunix anymore. I, I'm using uh, Hardware Solutions, which is kind of the same. So I use a, a router uh, wired in this, using a VPN on this, or Tor, because Hunix is just a Tor version of this. And that's pretty much the same thing. So, so yeah, so I do it on hardware. Do you expect Pine phones to start shipping? They will be probably be on uh, on pre-order in the next week or two, maybe next week, and uh, that's what I hear. And they'll ship around May. May shipping. Okay, that's the expectation from Pine sixty four. So that's my inside knowledge there, and I do talk to them so they know. Uh, they are affected. The reason it's been delayed was because of coronavirus. They're, they don't have a place to, they don't have a supplier that can make the phones. They don't have a phone assembly plant figured out because they don't know who to go to because they're all closed. Okay. If you watch some of these videos on the coronavirus, you'll see that China is pretty much shut down. Jellyfish. Yes, I'm doing the, uh, the uh, that'll be my next video. It's probably McAfee. Unless it gets canceled again, my next video will be McAfee. So, uh, how to like this live? Uh, do you have to exit and come back? I'm not sure. Salvador, you must have figured it out. Finally, you see the new router case. Yes. Instead of saying Brax Wi-Fi, this says Brax Router. By the way, uh, if you get a new one of these, I'm I'm sending you the two gigabyte model. This is a very funny thing, but the one gigabyte is now the same price as the two gigabytes. They're out of stock because of China, the coronavirus. They're out of stock of the one gigabytes. So they have a lot of two gigabytes, and now they're selling the two gigabytes at the same price. So now. I am buying, I'm giving you this for so the new guys are getting this in two gigabytes for no extra cost. It's, it's weird. This is the effect of the coronavirus. Can I do banking through the VPN router? No. That's why you have to have an alternate network that's not VPN. Open source version of apps like YouTube and Facebook. Forget YouTube, forget Facebook. But yes, the answer is yes. Uh, open store is just basically web app. So turn location off and you're good to go. Uh, use a hack satellite dish Wi-Fi. Uh, you know, for some of you to think that satellite communications is any safer, first of all, it's not encrypted. Secondly, they they go to the satellite supplier, in which this one is in San, the you know, like the, the main one is in uh, San Diego. And they just tap all network communications back and forth among everyone in the world goes to San Diego. So if you want to tap, all you have to do is go to San Diego and listen in. If you're in the government, how hard is that? So no, pointless. Satellite com is pointless. 
Uh, you have to exit the chat and have to restart the street to get back, but I'm on Android app. Maybe easier from browser. Uh, good evening. Kathy, my friend, how are you doing? Uh, don't bank through a VPN. Tor through Tor VPN. Is, no, it depends. My bank does not accept a VPN. Some banks do. A lot of banks don't. So, so no, never on Tor. They'll never accept banking on Tor. But on a VPN, they may accept it if the VPN is in the same area as you are. But if you use it from a remote location where you're using a VPN that's not in your local area, that's another one that they may re have reason to ban a VPN. Uh, okay. So again, let me, let me just summarize the, before I go here, summarize what we talked about. Uh, for your phone safety, the only solutions that seem to, to uh, you know, satisfy the bulk of the people here for the ultra secure, by all means, get an Ubuntu Touch phone, which is a Linux phone, and this is ultra secure. So I have these in stock. You can buy this for me. So I have uh, I have a few of these. There, it's hard to find Nexus fives, so I don't have a large stock of these. So um, they're hard to find. You can't get a Pine phone yet, so that's not an option. So for the moment, these are hard to find. So I still have stock, but once the stock gets depleted, it may take me a while to get some. It, it, for a while there, I didn't have any. So I still have these now. So I have a, a few. I think I may have uh, uh, four, four of these, five of these in various conditions. Okay, so they're not all in top shape, but, uh, but I have them. For the rest of us, this is a solution I just came up with. This is brand new. And this is a customized AOSP Android open source project with no Google. This is a de-Googled phone. Absolutely no Google on here. And it runs an amazing set of apps. And it's a brand new phone or fairly new. It's 2019. And on my particular version here, I'm running Kindle, Braxme, DuckDuckGo, uh, a weather app called Forecasty, Netflix, a YouTube clone called NewPipe, OpenVPN, PayPal, uh signal skype spotify telegram viber waze and yelp okay so if you wanted to test we'll see what app i can install let me know i'll test it for you to see if you can install it but this is just pretty amazing because this really is a safe, safe enough phone for most people. And, and, uh, I'm selling this. This is a Moto, Motorola, Moto G7 Play made by Lenovo. And it has a custom AOSP Android open source Android 10 with no Google on it whatsoever. And like I said, it's a new phone and this is the newest Android, Android 10. And uh, for two sixty nine, okay. So that'll be uh, that'll for for now that'll be the price two sixty nine. So I, I'm out of stock now, but uh, well, I don't know. Check and see. I may still have one left, but I'm I I will have stock in the middle of the week. Do not zucking install Google Play. Zuck, no. You install Google Play on this, you wiped out the security. Okay. Uh, okay, so who else? Uh, who else? Uh, uh, these alleged privacy apps. What's a new model they are using to substitute for all that money that would... Making using our info seems clear. 
that I came in at the tail end of this. Can you briefly summarize why not the Librem 5? The Librem 5 will not get delivered until, for me, and I ordered a year and a half, it'll take me a year and a half to get it. So I'm not going to get mine till October. So I don't want to even talk about, you know, ducking thing. And, you know, it's, it's frustrating when I already have a Pine phone. And guess what? This Pine phone, not only do I have it right here, this is ready to go. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this. Just I'm just waiting for the software. This is going to be a fine, fine phone for the security. And I can tell you, I'm going to sell this as a Brax router. There are many other uses of this. This is like a Raspberry Pi. So I love this. Love this. But this is not something I'm going to get. First of all, I can't buy them. So, you know. I'm kind of out of stock here. I only have one. And so it's not only for me to test on. But uh, there are no real apps on this yet. So this will be a basic secure phone. This is going to be really, really, you know, interesting to play with. Like I can make Brax routers and any other kind of software run on this. So that's why this is kind of special is why you can you can do special function things with this because it's Linux, pure Linux. It's There's no Android on here. Okay, but in the meantime, since people want apps and people want to function, they want Waze. The Waze one has always been a big issue. I have Waze on here. Waze is running. And this has no Google ID. It doesn't know who the heck I am. I never signed into this phone. There's actually no way to sign into it. This is, this is uh, basically a generic system image GSI Android 10 of Android open source project AOSB with my modifications okay so you can call it the Brax the Brax uh, ROM Brax ROM if you want to call it that <laughs> okay so it's my modifications it's a Moto G7 Play 32 gigabytes of, of flash memory it's brand new Fairly brand new phone, 2019. So, very snazzy. So, this is, uh, I have unlimited supply of this. So, if I know how many people want it, I can make as many as I need to. Uh, I've already sold a few and uh, I don't have any stock. I sold what I have and I have uh, uh, many more coming. And... You know, I, I can get them within uh, three days or so. So if anybody wants them, you know, I can order and get them in three days and, and then I have to program that and then they'll be ready. So so uh, unlimited supply and uh, I'm really impressed by this for daily use. This is, uh, this is what I'm going to use. Okay, and then I'm going to use the Pine phone for... Uh, for my development work. The Pine phone is exciting, but maybe not for daily use. Okay, so di different different kind of use cases. Now, if you are, if, since you can't get a Pine phone and you want to have a very secure option, then get a get a, a bunch to touch. And I still have a few of these. Okay, I've sold a lot of these. But it's so, the, the problem I have is it's very hard to get a Nexus 5 and it's even harder to find them in good condition you know they, they all have some flaw and and unfortunately you know it's sometimes uh, I miss them like somebody got a really bad uh, version of this and I actually I'm and I'm sorry for for having shipped one that actually had some scratches in the back that I actually did not see you know I, I do have a lot of these and I, I looked at the front and did a quick glance and I thought it was fine. And then I, I looked closer and in fact, yes, it was it was pretty scratched up in the back. And I, 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 I did not see that. Did not see that. So uh, the, the, the ones I have now don't have scratches. It's Rob, our service department, if we buy one. Uh... I don't know about you, Kelp. I don't know if I want to be your service department. Uh, 32 gig is what it takes to run your VPN servers. Can we run a VPN server on the GPN set? 
no, you cannot run anything on a G7 because this is Android. This is not Linux. I can't run a router through this. Hotspot. You can make it a hotspot. You can make it a hotspot and share a VPN connection, which is kind of like a router, if you want to do that. Would it be possible to do a privacy phone with a fair phone? Yes, but a fair phone is not uh, available. That's a European phone and not cheap. So it's kind of like, you know, just think about what I'm talking about here. I sell this phone for about 160, 165, depending. Okay, this is the Ubuntu Touch with the Nexus 5. They're very hard to find. I sell, sell this for 269. It's only 100 bucks more. So, it's a new phone. And it runs all the apps. Kind of looks like an iPhone there. And look, I mean, it's full screen. It's kind of like an iPhone with the notch and everything too. So this is, uh, this is for usability for day to day for your family and so on. You know, this is, is excellent. There's no Google ID on here. I have never logged into this phone. Do you expect the Pine phone to be faster than Nexus 5 with Ubuntu Touch once the Pine phone is ready for the mainstream? No. No disco potato. The Nexus 5 is about the same speed as the Pine phone. Okay, they're about the same speed. So you're not going to find much difference here. This phone is very fast. This is an 8 core. This is as fast as an iPhone. This is very fast. So, so no. 160 no it, it's it's between 160 to whatever depends on the condition so the the price of this varies so this one is probably 160 the one i'm holding here but again it depends on on the uh condition and it's, if it's 16 gigabytes or 32 gigabytes so the uh the uh, 32 gigabytes is more expensive Hardware scheduled obsolescence is the big issue of cheap phones. Uh, this is a new phone. So obsolescence is not an issue right now with a new phone. It's an issue with an older phone, yes, like this. Although this will survive with a bunch of touch for a long time. But no, this is... Uh, it's a new phone, so, I mean, worry about it five years from now. Right now, this is a good shape. And once it runs with Android, then it's going to run because, you know. <clears throat> if you want me to load a new version of Android on it, you know, five years from now, send it back to me and I'll do it for you for some minimal price. Um, okay, what, what am I missing here? What? Kelp farm? You're saying spot on with kelp farming? Kelp farming never says anything that's worth spot on. Come on. What? What would? Uh, what would kelp ever say? I'm not selling pine phones. I don't have a supply of pine phones. I don't sell pine phones. Pine phones you get from from Pine 64. I don't do anything to Pine phones. My, my thing is that if I have to sell you software, then I'll sell you that, but I can't sell you something that you can buy someplace else for the same price without me doing anything. If I have to have some value added, which is what I do here, this is a, uh, this is a Brax com uh, customized Android AOSB. So obviously I did all the work and took me a lot of time to do this so if you're saying well I you know I'll do it myself well you should if you know how to do it do it uh, I'm gonna tell you it took me a very long time and you know I'm I'm 
I'm an expert and I've done this before. It was very difficult to do. So, but I got it figured out for the phone and now I can do it. Uh, it still takes a long time to build these. So at the moment, it still takes like three hours to do. So I got to cut it down to, so it takes a lot less time than that. But at the moment, it's taking me three hours to do one of these. So it's very, very tedious. I know it won't take me three hours later on, but at the moment it is. Uh, if you do sell them with your add-ons, I will have four. Uh, these Pine phones, you know you know what? Uh, I, I ordered a Librem 5 Kelp. Not sure how I ever, you know, and I will take delivery of that one Librem 5 just because, even for 720 bucks. I'm not sure I want another Librem 5. To be honest with you, these pine, oh, wrong phone. These pine phones are great. Pine phones are fantastic. They're close to the same speed as the Librem 5. You can run the Librem 5 software on here. This is the next thing I'm going to do on it, run the Librem 5 software on here. And it's close to the same speed. So why am I going to pay extra for Librem 5? But I will take delivery. Uh, you know, I already pay them, so... 720 bucks so yep it's too bad but you know I've been being played around with so <clears throat> I think they used the coronavirus as an excuse to delay again because coronavirus can cause delay but you know I have to wait till October it's crazy so anyway, so for practical sense, I think uh, I needed to satisfy people and give you a solution. And this is an awesome solution for now. And I'm going to tell you, I'm dumping my iPhone for this. I already did. So instead of an iPhone, I'm using this. Uh, since I don't have any Google ID on here, this doesn't identify me in any kind of way. Location's off. Uh, there are no Google apps. It's sucking awesome. Okay, so sucking awesome solution. Incredible, incredible that I could do it. So I, I'm I'm very 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 happy with that. So uh, if you uh, kelp, if you want a uh, privacy solution, which you don't, uh, you know, this is Android, and I know you love Android, so. There you go. But this is not a standard Android. This is a Brax modified Android. Hello, Rahoon. Uh, I think the the Fira, which doesn't work as a phone yet, and then the Librem 5. It's an opportunity where uh, you need the ThinkPad of phones. Uh, yeah, this is made by Lenovo, which makes ThinkPad. I have to admit, for such an inexpensive phone, uh, yes, it's not in glass like an iPhone, but the screen is Gorilla Glass. I mean, it's bright, it's new, it's awesome. For the price, it's, I mean, like, wow, the, the quality today. Okay, the quality is very good for the price. I'm an open book. Well, then uh, Kelp, then the criminals will... Well, you, you, he, uh, Kelp is always into criminals, so he's basically saying uh, that everyone is a terrorist and a criminal, so we all have to be spied on. So therefore, we deserve to be spied on so he can be safe. Well, go to China. Um, ThinkPad of phones. Yeah, so if, if you want this and I don't have stock, don't worry, just alert me that you want one so that I know how many to buy because it only takes a few days to get it. Okay, so I have, I have, uh, you know, how many do, I'm, do I have coming? I think I have four more coming midweek. So by the middle of the week, I'll, I'll probably have four of these more. And, you know, if that runs out, if you warn me ahead, I can probably get some more by the end of the week. So it takes about three days to, uh, to get stock and then a day to program it. So, uh, yeah, unlimited. So if, if 50 of you said you want it, uh, it can be done. 
Okay, it can be done. So, uh, Reform PC is the ThinkPad of laptops. What am I missing here? Uh, maybe I'm in China. The uh, Donnie Graphene. Why are you so? Why is everyone so fond of Graphene? Uh, you know, uh, Graphene is AOS speed, just like this. They don't really have any anything on it that relates to privacy, so I'm not sure. I don't think duck, putting DuckDuckGo on there counted as Graphene. Well, I put DuckDuckGo on there too. Does that make this Graphene? They don't really have anything. It's it's a cybersecurity phone. Oops, I'll focus here. It's a cybersecurity phone in the sense that there's some encryption in it, but it has nothing to do with privacy. So there's no purpose to getting a uh, a, uh, and then you have to buy an expensive Pixel phone with it. Okay, so it doesn't offer anything. This this one. Uh, this one I'm selling for two sixty nine was gonna be cheaper than getting a pixel. Okay? Get graphene, you need a pixel, and then you know, it's more expensive. Uh do you make your camera product run with PoE? Yes, my camera product r runs with PoE. Uh I I kinda took my camera product off the store jellyfish because I'm not I'm not getting the uh the uh, demand for it and I don't, I don't really want to you know do tech support on it if I'm not going to get the demand so uh, you know I, I have a lot of stock of cameras and I'm just going to put it in every corner of my house yeah degoogled graphene well this is Brax degoogled so my degoogle is better than graphene because I'm using it on a less expensive Moto G7 Play. So you don't need graphene, you just use mine. That encryption has nothing to do with privacy is untrue. You are zocked up on bias. That is not, that's not true. Watch my video on cybersecurity versus privacy, because if you don't understand that difference, you're, you're, uh, you should go to Security Now and watch Leo Laporte and Steve Gibson, and they'll tell you about cybersecurity, because cybersecurity is not what I, I am concerned about on these phones. Uh, if somebody, uh, if you're worried about protecting your phone because somebody is going to steal it, but yet the phone is leaking out your data, what's the point? Now, if you want a cyber secure phone and not leak out the data, okay, I buy that, but that is not the point of many of these apps, in which case it doesn't make any difference to me. In my case, I have no data on my phone. If you stole my phone, I'm not going to care. There's nothing on here. There's nothing on my phone. Okay? There's nothing important on my phone. My, my important stuff is on Brax Me. It's not on the phone. So if I lost the phone, I changed my Braxme password, end of story. You're locked out, that's it. Now, if you're sto storing naked pictures of yourself on the phone, yeah, you need a cyber secure phone. If that is your use case, which is not the use case I'm trying to, to uh, promote here, then that is not an issue. So if you, if you want that, then use an iPhone. I, an iPhone is actually a cyber secure device that is really bad on privacy, but it's a cyber secure device. iPhone is fairly cyber secure. I despise Android. I will wait till a stable Linux phone is ready. I, that's fine. I still sell Linux phones. Linux phones are excellent. What communication are you doing to, in privacy if you aren't encrypting it? What communications are you doing in privacy if you aren't encrypting it? I am encrypting. What, are you, what the fuck are you talking about? <clears throat> I don't know what you're talking about, Unbiased. You're, uh, you're talking like kelp now. Okay. Okay. 
Well, yes, communications requires encryption. So your iPhone has encryption for iMessage, except Zucking Apple can decrypt it. So what the suck is encryption for? So please think. Putting words in like encryption doesn't mean anything if it's not functionally doing anything for your privacy. It may be cyber secure against criminals, but it's not good for your privacy for Apple. Against Apple. What is a good privacy landline or VI? They're all the same, jellyfish. They're, they're, they, a landline or voice over IP phone is not encrypted because of Kalia. Kalia. By law, they, they can't be encrypted. That's why I don't like these voice over IP, like Skype. Skype is within the scope of Kalia. Okay? Uh, how about, uh, yes, yes, Kelp, uh, encrypt is not Apple's, unbiased, you're just talking nonsense right now, okay, you, you, you know, it, uh, it, it's not really relevant to this conversation, so, so just trust me when I say, if we're talking about Graphene OS, then nothing in Graphene OS is specifically any better than what I'm doing here with this de-googled AOSP for Moto G7. Yes, they have a de-googled Pixel 2. Okay, so if you want to pay the money for a de-googled Pixel 2, you can do that. Uh, this is a newer phone. This is newer than the Pixel 2. Dial-up over landline can be encrypted, but dial up over landline can be encrypted. Uh, you can use Kai. Now, Kai is Google, so I mean, there must be metadata on there. I mean, it's all web app, so it's, it's more limited, but there's got to be metadata because you're going to log into your Google account of some sort or your Kai account, and there you go. You're, you're back to the same thing that I'm talking about. So, no, you know, uh, Kai may have had a chance before Google got in there, but now that it's owned by Google, I'm not sure what you're going to gain. Okay? Mel Gibson, that law is unlawful. Uh, in, in many ways, I agree with you. Unbiased, you're you're confusing the you you're interrupting what I'm talking about with mixing issues, and so I'm just making sure that you understand that general statements like encryption is not is not part of this discussion uh, because used incorrectly it doesn't mean anything. The blue iMessage color in a way better than the green is way better than the green SMS. That is correct, Mike. Uh, because the uh, the blue one uh, enables I uh, uh, Apple to, to spy on your content, but the green one can be spied on by anyone with SS7. So any SS7 hacker can spy on the green SMS, not counting the fact that it flows through the internet unencrypted, and it can be seen. I know this because I sent SMS out through a uh, API visible on the internet. It's part of the API for it. You don't know that poop that Google bought yet. So forget it, guy. You know, the, the, the best solution is either have a Linux phone. There's really only two solutions at the moment. A Linux phone, a bunch of touch on a Nexus 5. And if, if you can't handle that, then graduate to a newer phone and run a degoogled AOSP degoogled by me. And it has so many apps on here. This is this is amazing. So the Ubuntu Touch is obviously more amazing, but it's not as usable because there's not as many apps. 
Okay, that is not a good faith argument on your part. Uh, am I right thinking ASP will not get push notifications? Yeah, actually it will, depends on the app. You get telemetry with push notifications though, so be careful. Push notifications equals telemetry. Sony Xperia is expensive, uh, Zizi, Zizi. So then comes the question, do I get a Sony Xperia and put Sailfish OS on it? It's gonna cost you 400 bucks versus this phone for 269. Okay. So when you get to that conclusion, you're gonna say, hmm, since Sailfish is not completely open source, this actually is open source. Uh, I mean, it begs the question, what's the better deal? I'm going to say this is a better deal because you're going to load Android apps also on Sailfish. So, yeah, this is the better deal. Besides, you can't buy Sailfish outside of the EU. It's not available in the U.S. They had to trench as a new land for half a mile country because someone dug it up. Whatever happened to Firefox OS? It became Kai OS. And then Apple bought it. Uh, yeah, Spirit, that makes sense. I don't know if they have to take him out, but just let him expire. If I buy the Google Form from you, will it work in Europe? Yeah, it should. Uh, check the model. It's a Moto G7 Play. Make sure it, uh, you know, check the model because I'm not going to check that for you. Make sure it works in the in whatever you are. Uh, it's very expensive to ship it to a different country and you have to worry about tax. So uh, uh, shipping typically costs 25 bucks to go to a different country. So just add that in. Instead of the eight dollar for shipping, you know, you have to add in about twenty five bucks in shipping, and then uh, obviously you have to worry about whatever tax you have in your particular country. Yeah, I mean, the uh, Mel, you're probably right. They just probably just expire them. You know, don't connect them to anything. I mean, I can't imagine someone who actually take them out. Okay, what uh, uh, I was actually just referring to the blue message color usually visually appeasing, interesting about how it works. So, yes, yeah, so uh, blue means iMessage, meaning they took it out of SMS. Twisted Pair is the most secure. Uh, they were spying on that too, under, you know, the government can do, do many things. So, underwater cables were being spied on. That's a standard thing that they do. What step, hold on, jellyfish, what steps can healthcare providers and their patients take to protect their data? Is there an alternative to electronic records? Can general family doctors keep written health records instead? Jellyfish, you do know that I am a, a, one of the inventors, one of the first inventors of electronic health records. Okay, you do know that, right? So it's a funny question to ask of me. Although by by uh, by the doctors are very restricted now. They they are forced to do electronic records. Otherwise they get uh, they get dinged. So they they get financial motivations for doing health records. What's on your stance on smart devices? They're very smart on spying on you, Neil. So avoid them. Phone before. Do you have any videos on this the Googling process? Uh, can, it's very hard. To, okay, general tip, Rahun, if you're in, uh, if you're, you know, are, are you from India? So if you have, uh, if you have, uh, you know, your local sources, what you do is load Lineage OS, which is fairly easy on an old phone, but Lineage OS only supports old phones, so. So, or mostly old phones. So if you have, if they have Lineage OS support, you can install that, which is a little bit easier. 
and then uh, uh, install it without gaps, without Google Apps. And that will be a degoogled phone. This one is a bit more work. This is AOSP GSI generic system image, Android 10. So this is the newest Android, degoogled uh, with a lot more steps. And this is this is yeah so this is a lot more difficult process so this is not lineage there, there was no lineage os support so for new phones it's very hard to find lineage os support okay uh there is spotify in here yes i loaded spotify again before i sign off i'll read the apps to you and then i'll i'll uh i'll in this broadcast so here's the apps on this phone this is a moto g7 play that is available from my store for 269 and if i don't have it in stock right now just talk to me on brax and tell me you want one and i can get it in stock within a few days and then you just have to wait a few days and i can get it okay I, it's kind of going fast so you know i i have to buy them and order them ahead of time so on this one, running AOSP, uh, GSI, no name, uh, we'll call it Brax ROM, my modification, with my modifications on it. It's degoogled completely. It's running DuckDuckGo, Yelp, Amazon, I mean, sorry, Kindle, Netflix, BraxMe, Spotify, Ways, PayPal, a uh, YouTube clone called New Pipe, a weather app called Forecasty. Hold on. Uh, Open VPN for VPN, PayPal, uh, and then for communications, I'm running Signal, Skype, Spotify. Telegram, Viber, Waze, and Yelp. And yes, you can run WhatsApp, but I, I'm not going to do it for you. I, I wouldn't want you to install WhatsApp on here. Yes, you can run Facebook. I'm not going to tell you to run Facebook on here. Yes, you can run Instagram. I'm not going to tell you to do that. Okay? So what you definitely cannot run on here is any app that has payments on them. So if the app requires payment, Periscope doesn't run on here. There is no YouTube anything on here. YouTube, anything that's Google does not install. Okay. Pandora, I haven't tried Pandora. You want me to try Pandora? Um, okay, before I go, I'm going to see if I can install Pandora for AMG. Okay. Then I'll give you an immediate answer if it works. Okay. I mean, if it's if it has an unpaid app, you know, it, it usually works. So we'll find out. I don't know. I don't think Pandora has anything paid. I think it's free. So let me see. Okay. Installing it now. It, you have to run it before you get the error message. So you, you can download it and then it doesn't work. Okay. Pandora. Yep. No problem. Pandora. We'll add that to the list. Pandora works. Yeah, Pandora works. How to install apps in a Google phone? You use Aurora. So I preload Aurora Store on here, and Aurora Store works by spoofing your Google ID. So it doesn't use a Google ID, it uses a fake one. No, you do not do that term and usist. You use Aurora. Okay, that's why I'm able to install everything here. Okay, as long as the app doesn't is, is free, then it should install fairly well. Uh, which is preferred lineage? It depend term terminusist terminusist terminusist. It depends on your your uh, your threat level. Family members will probably not like a bunch to touch. 
Uh, but if I were a family member, a young person, I probably prefer this. Uh, this is uh, I I have I have both, so it depends on my use. If I'm going someplace I want to be extra secure, I'll probably bring a bunch to touch. If I'm just doing my normal stuff, then I'll I'll use this. This everything works, you know, Bluetooth. Um, everything works except for fingerprint. Okay, this one. Bluetooth doesn't work too well in the car. So that's one of the reasons that's a uh, F Droid is very okay, but there's not a lot of apps, standard apps on F Droid. You're not going to be f able to find the apps I mentioned on F Droid. Uh, any F Droid app is going to be good. How long before these are compromised? This culprit is always talking nonsense, okay? Always. Compromise what? So so anyway, uh, if you use a Google app, if you use a Google app on it, then uh, then obviously there is some some telemetry, but you're not identified anyway. So uh, so I'm not as worried about it. So yes, you can use Waze on it, and Waze is tracking you, but it doesn't really know who you are. So. You know, it's going to guess, oh, I started from this destination, so maybe that's an identity. But there's no actual identity because there's no Google ID. Okay, it's 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 pretty good for normal users, It you know, for privacy. It's pretty good. No, I cannot de-Google anything else. I, I choose to de-Google only the devices that I work with because it takes so long to learn how to de-Google one. So, so uh, Graphene OS decided they're going to de, 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 de Google the Pixel 2, and they're spending they're spending all their time de Googling a Pixel 2, which is more expensive and yet an older phone. So I am de Googling a new phone here. It's a new phone, so which I think is a better investment of time. Maybe next year I'll find a different new phone to de Google. Okay, but right now, this is a new phone, so it's good to de-Google this. Okay, yes, new pipe is on, on F-Droid, yes. Okay, so, those are the choices. Uh, they all have different uh, use cases, and and it's up to you to, you know, make, make a decision based on the use case that you have. So, this is still very valid. Okay? This is still very valid. I can't really, you know, tell you to get a Pine phone because you can't get one. So six months from now, we'll talk about, you know, what we can do with a Pine phone. But it may take that long before we actually have many things going on it. So, but it's exciting in any case. Okay, so the whole model and problem with phones you're running from were from a free concept. Everything ran in and now many see the results. Uh, and now we see the results. That, well, that's true. It's hard to take out code and not break the hardware. Uh, yes, Mel Gibson. That's why. That's why it is uh, difficult to do. So, but you know, now that I successfully did it, with help from many, many people on the internet. Uh, you know, just pulling out whatever I can pull and then uh, making modifications. Uh, so, and it seems to work. Uh, it, uh, there's no tools for that kelp because there's no identification. The whole point is the phone is unidentified. So I don't, you know, whatever you're talking about doesn't make any sense because there's no identification on the phone. I never logged into this phone. This phone doesn't know who I am. How, how does it know who I am? I never saw, and by the way, you know, I may use this phone and sell it to you. Now, who knows anything? Nobody knows anything about this. Yes, yeah, so Graphene OS can, can work on that. I don't have any, see any particular advantage to uh, Graphene at the moment. So you want to pay extra for, for a, a, an expensive Pixel 3a XL? Go do that. Okay, so anyway, so uh, 
just uh, just you know it's I, I there's so many naysayers it's all, like you know I, I I don't discount what other people do it's just don't discount what I do this is my way and I you know I understand privacy they're not focused on privacy they're focused on cybersecurity if you look at what graphene says okay they, they don't have anything yet they just it's just standard AOSP for now okay Okay, I'm here for way too long. This is much longer than I wanted to be in here because there's too many questions. So next week is uh, uh, one will be to show you in detail what I actually. Yes, I you log into whatever you log in. Yes, you do log in. It's a standard app. You log in, but they don't know who the phone is. Therefore, they can't tie it to anything else. Uh, meaning, if you're on Spotify the other apps don't know what Spotify is doing. So you're isolated to one app. Okay? So I just want to make sure that's, that's clear. It's basically, yes, you're logging into each app, but you have isolation, so you're not losing your privacy based on other than what the app already knows, which is limited. Okay, so anyway, thanks for uh, watching and uh, contact me on Braxad.me. Everyone should go on Braxad.me except for uh, uh, Mel Gibson. He wants to stay in Wicker. Mel Gibson will stay in Wicker. Anybody else who wants to go on Braxad.me, come on down. It's, it's more of a uh, social place than it is secret messaging. Okay, so thank you for uh, watching, my friends, and uh, hit that like button before you leave and then next week the second video i'm going to do is with john mcafee so i'm interviewing john mcafee and so that video will come out as well as the the one i just showed you okay on the phone so those two videos will come out next week have a great have a great weekend my friends good night and take care of yourself don't get infected now.